This happened three years ago. At the time, I was 21, and I'm a female. I went on vacation with my family. We stayed at a hotel resort right next to the beach. Every night, my family would meet up for a drink or an evening stroll on the Pomerade. The Pomerade itself was always filled with a lot of people, especially couples, enjoying a beautiful evening walk. On the third day, I couldn't sleep. My brother was still awake, but we had a fight earlier, so I didn't ask him to come on my walk. Now, before you think I was being stupid, it was midnight, I think, and still the Pomerade was filled with people. So I put on some loose pants and a shirt, nothing fancy, and went on a walk. Normally, I'm quite aware of my surroundings, especially at night, but since there are still so many people around, I put my earphones in and listened to some relaxing music. The walk started off great. I was watching the beautiful nightlife on the Pomerade and the other resorts. After 30 minutes, I went to sit on the beach to tie my shoelaces. In the corner of my eye, I noticed a man who stopped as well, sitting on a bench two benches from mine. I didn't find anything suspicious yet. I start to walk again and notice the man getting up as well and walking about 20 meters behind me. I slowed down my pace to put my headphones in my pocket. I was getting suspicious but wanted to know for sure. Again, I stopped and pretended to search for something on my phone. He stopped as well. So I had to pass the creepy man to get back to my hotel. Since I was still surrounded by people, I felt somewhat safe. In my head, I had the genius plan to go down to the beach and hide behind one of the beach chairs. The beach was pitch black, and in my mind, this was the best solution. I start to speed up. The creepy man didn't match my pace yet. Then a big group of people passed by. Right then, I made a run for the beach and hid. 30 seconds later, I saw the man looking for me from the promenade in my direction. He was searching for me. I was hoping that he would give up, but he started making his way towards the beach chairs. That moment, I didn't think and started running on the beach. Once I was far enough, I went back on the promenade and sprinted. Completely soaked in sweat, I stopped in front of the hotel and looked back. I had lost the creepy man. I rushed back to my room. That was the only and last time I went walking alone. I know I should have asked for help from the people around me. And just because you're surrounded by people, don't think you're safe. To the man who stalked and chased me, let's not meet again. This really creepy thing happened to me yesterday. I'm still processing it because... What the fuck? Bit of context. I live in Ireland. Pretty peaceful country. Recently moved from Galway to Dublin. Moved to North Dublin, which is a rougher part, but it's still not that bad. I live with my family outside the city. Could be considered the countryside. This area is pretty rural. It's just houses and farms, pretty much with no shops or stations nearby. Mind you, there are a lot of houses around, but we all have distance as we have big gardens. There are no sidewalks and this road is pretty narrow and worn out. It's rare to see cars, so it's fine to just go on the road. I was going on my daily 2K run. Usually go around 6 p.m., but yesterday I had some studying to do and went out around 9 p.m. It was pretty dark. Let me describe the experience. Imagine on the left, there will be the house that you lived in. Lights on. Then on your right, you'll see a farm. Then you'll see an abandoned building right beside. And then an area of trees for 200 meters or so. This was pretty much the whole road. Not abandoned, but creepy enough to scare me at night. Anyways, I usually listen to music on my runs with the volume all the way up. So I can't hear anything. So I reached the area with a patch of trees. It's basically pitch black. The lights don't work properly. Occasionally they turn on, then flicker back off. So I need to use a flashlight to navigate. A song from West Side Story is blasting in my headphones and I'm vibing. And then the lights flicker back on. So that's great. 
but that's when it hits me. There's a figure standing about 30 meters away, like 20 meters from the road, in the trees. First I thought I was seeing stuff, but no, he was standing still, not moving at all. I'm creeped, so I keep running. I turn down the volume of my music just in case I hear the figure move, so I can make a run for it. I speed up and pass the figure, and I still don't turn up my music. After I'm about 100 meters away, I turn my music up and try to process what happened. Maybe I'm seeing things because it was pretty dark. At this point, I'm long gone. However, I still need to come back home and usually walk back the distance I ran. Basically, I run 2K and walk 2K back. Again, I come to that spot. This time, the light is flickering, but they're mostly staying on. I try to observe the spot where the figure was standing, but I see nothing. At this point, I'm creeped out. I turn off my music and start to run past the spot because I'm scared. And suddenly, a man jumps across the street right in front of me. It looks like the same figure. I came to a halt for a second. I'm shocked, and then he starts moving, so I turn around and start running as fast as I can. While I'm doing this, he starts screaming for help. I eventually run past the tree area and went to the area with houses. Someone heard the screaming and came out to ask me if everything was okay. So I stopped running and realized the guy was gone. I explain everything to the man and at this point I'm extremely creeped out and scared. I still need to go back home but my parents aren't home. They went over to a friend's house so I'm left home alone. I asked the stranger for a lift because I'm not going to go back through there ever again. Thankfully, the stranger isn't an old creep, and he escorts me home. I lock all the doors and check everything to make sure I'm safe. Shortly after, my parents arrived, but I didn't tell them anything, because I didn't want to worry them. I haven't gone out for a run today, because I'm generally scared. I'm terrified thinking about what would have happened if I was too tired to run, and he caught me. I'll update you guys if anything happens. I don't think anything else will happen though, hopefully. I like to walk early in the morning. After the sun comes up and the route I take is mostly through residential areas. But there is a section that leads you down the waterfront. It's fairly isolated, especially at that time of the day. And it's lined with tall grass and trees. I will pass the odd runner or someone biking but that's about it. I don't do this walk as often now, as I walk to and from work, but still enjoy it on the weekends when I have a chance. Last Saturday, I had a chance, so I headed out for my walk. As I approached the section that leads down to the water, I saw a man across the road go onto the trail. A few minutes later, I approached it and expected to see him walking down to the water, as you can see a fair distance, but he was nowhere to be seen. It struck me as odd, and my instincts told me to take an alternate route along the road that meets up further down the waterfront. I was leery, so I kept looking back, and after a minute or so, I saw him come out of the tall grass and go back across the road into a park area between the houses. I shrugged it off and figured maybe he went to go take a leak. Sunday morning was beautiful, and I decided to go for another walk. And the same damn thing, but this time, I happened to catch a glimpse of him going onto the trail. I was seriously creeped out and even crossed the road to go past that section and continued along the road. And this time, I didn't see him come back out. Well, at least not before I went out of sight down to the waterfront. I've been doing the same walk at about the same time for a couple years, almost every day except recently. And it has crossed my mind that maybe this guy has been watching me. Am I being too overly paranoid? Now I'm hesitant about that route, which sucks, as that part of the walk is actually my favorite bit. I often see deer and a lot of birds. I always have my phone easily accessible, and I have a pouch on my waist with a pocket knife, and I carry three pound weights in my hands. Pretty sure I could do damage with them if I wanted to. What other ways could I be more prepared for a creepy encounter, or should I just avoid the route now? Or do you think I'm just overreacting?
I'm a female, 23. Well, this just happened to me this morning. I don't know if it's a big deal, but here we go. I walk to the bus stop every morning to go to work around 6 a.m. And today was a particularly dark morning. It was freezing and had been raining. My street is the last one in the neighborhood. Behind my street is just woods, no house or street. And for seven months when I've been walking, there's no one in my street that goes to work at the same time as me. Only one guy in the next street that sometimes leaves in a hurry. So today I was walking, just had crossed my street, and all of a sudden I hear a noise that's not too far from me. When I turn back, there's this older guy trying to walk silently behind me. Doesn't look like he's going to work. There's no backpack with him, and not even an umbrella. Apparently he had got out of my own street, like he was waiting for me to get out of my house. He was walking slow, but when I started walking faster, I looked behind me, and he started walking faster too. I kind of ran a little, terrified with my little taser that I always carry in my backpack, until I got to the bus stop where some guys always wait for the bus with me. I waited to see if the creep would show up in front of the bus stop. If he was going somewhere, he'd pass the bus stop as there's no other ways to go out, but he never did. I guess he just gave up when I ran. The worst part is, there's an old creep in my neighborhood that was in jail for a long time for being a serial, for being a serial rapist in the 90s. He served his sentence and today is a free man. But like last month, he was asking my mom to take care of our garden and he kept creeping around the house when my dad's out for work. I don't know if that was him today, but it was dark and he's the first one I can think of. This happened about 14 years ago when I was 18 years old. I was friends with a lot of kids of shady people as a teen when I lived in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. One of the fastest ways to get from one part of the town to the other was walking on the railroad tracks. To set part of the scene, there was an old abandoned building along the tracks. I was wearing a hoodie and walking along the tracks when I heard someone from the entrance of the building say, I think that's him. I started running and heard someone behind me running on my heels. They caught up to me and grabbed my hood and spun me around. I was face to face with one of my friend's dads. He goes, Oh, I'm sorry, bud. I thought you were someone else. You almost got stabbed. I was like, Well, thanks for not stabbing me, man. He goes, Come over later for supper. I'll feed you and give you a few beers to make up for this. And if you see Johnny, let him know I'm looking for him. Sometimes it's good to know the wrong people. When I was 17, I was going through Virginia with my mom on our way to North Carolina. We were staying in a hotel in Alexandria, and a lot of the places were walking distance from the place. So one day, we got ready to get breakfast over at a Panera Bread a few blocks away. It's around maybe 11 a.m., decently populated area. It's summer. I'm in the typical summer clothes, nothing too extreme, a tank top and jean shorts. This guy walks towards us on the sidewalk, and he starts walking directly towards us. And as he comes closer, I'm like, what the fuck is this guy doing? He comes up to my mom, and I'm five or so feet away, because I didn't realize he started saying something. And then I hear, how much for the little one? Because he thinks I'm a prostitute, my mom's my pimp. My mom was like, that's my daughter, she's not for sale. Oh well, you have a beautiful daughter. Can I bump some cigarettes? When we were leaving Alexandra the day or two later, we are pretty sure we saw the same dude pass down on a park bench. So horny homeless guy who thought I was a hooker. Let's not meet again. It was 2018, back when I lived in the suburbs of Paris. I had been playing Pokemon Go since its release, and I used to go out and play at night, always with my best friends on voice calls. It was a night like any other, following my usual route. 
It was about 2 a.m. and I had already covered about a good two kilometers. I found myself about one kilometer away from home, standing near a pokey stop, catching what I could while talking to my friend, just like every night. It was a residential street with a few street lights, but quite dark as there was a field just behind it. After about five minutes, I noticed a man in his 30s on the opposite sidewalk, just a few meters away from me, holding head shears in his hands, and there was a pile of branches at his feet. I thought this man was just trimming a bunch of branches of his tree. However, when I described the scene to my friend, he said, You should leave right away. No one does gardening in the middle of the night. Despite my friend's warning, I was so focused on Pokemon Go that I wanted to capture all the Pokemon before leaving, so I stayed while keeping an eye on the man's actions. As I looked at the man, I realized he wasn't cutting any branches. He was only staring at me. He would occasionally move and hide behind a parked van nearby while spying on me through the windows. He knew very well I could see him, and I began to feel scared. Despite my friends pleading for me to leave, I still hadn't caught all the Pokemon, so I hesitated to go. The man continued his strange behavior, crossing over to my side of the street and hiding behind some bushes while staring at me. Then he went back to his pile of branches and stared at me again. Finally, I had enough. I decided to leave. I walked normally towards my home, trying not to show any fear. I had a straight path back home. My friend on the call asked me to check behind me just in case the man followed me. Indeed, he was, still holding the head shears about 10 meters behind me. I then made a left turn instead of going straight, even though that made my way longer. I wanted to make sure that he was following me, and it wasn't just a coincidence. He continued to follow me. I picked up my pace, taking snaps just in case something happened. When I reached the end of the street, I was out of breath but safe. There's no one behind me. I entered my home, feeling relieved. Suddenly, a white car pulled up in front, stopped, and the driver rolled down his window. It was a man with his pruning shears. Now he knew where I lived. I rushed inside, locked everything, grabbed a kitchen knife, and waited until someone woke up so I could go to bed. There had been no further incidents. No one believed me, so we checked the surveillance cameras at home, and unfortunately, I was right. I remember feeling sick to my stomach while tears ran down my cheeks into my beard. I was sitting in my car on the side of the highway around midnight in between two major cities in Europe. Maybe less than an hour earlier, I had fought bitterly with my girlfriend. We both got mad at each other. She got passive aggressive and I began to yell at her. I couldn't stand to be with her that evening. So I got my keys, slammed the door and drove to my apartment in another city. I had to take a break during my drive home. The episode of my girlfriend woke emotions that were too great for me to ignore. So I stood there on the highway with my blinking light and no engine turned on. It was silent around me except for the occasional truck passing and constant clicking of the blinker light. My body was tight and my mind kept replaying it over and over again. I hate when that happens, so I decided to continue driving. As a heavy flow of tears stopped, I turned the key, but it couldn't turn all the way. I was making a face, surprised that I couldn't turn my key all the way to start my engine. I retried. Nothing. The key was stuck again at the same position. I was stubborn and tried several times again and failed. Damn it. Thoughts of staying the night on the highway rushed to the forefront of my thoughts. Why? Because I foolishly forgot to grab my cell phone as I was storming out of the apartment. Now I had no means to contact the emergency service of roadside assistance. Now the clicking of the blinking light was a constant blow with a sledgehammer to my head. I shut it off and realized for the first time how dark it was around me. Trucks passed me by within the following minutes, but I did not want to step out of my car and wave one of the drivers over. I didn't trust them. Don't ask me why. 
I always hate when people freeze in a situation that requires action. So I stepped out of my car. It was now slightly raining. Obviously, I knew where I was since I regularly drive the highway back and forth. And I knew that two kilometers ahead was a highway exit. So I figured that I'd walk on the side of the highway up to the exit. There was a gas station and I hoped the place would still be open even shortly after midnight. So I closed my car and began walking on the other side of the guardrail, away from the road. So the road was on my left and trees illuminated by moonlight were on my right. I confess, I was scared, very much. I had no particular reason to be afraid, but my mind turned the shadows from the trees into men hiding there, watching me with intense looking eyes and hands ready to grab. After 15 minutes or so, I began to move up a small hill, and the rain turned to snow. It was snowing for a while there, because the earth and trees were covered in white. After yet another while, I saw the exit in the distance. I reached it faster than I thought I would. I miscalculated the distance, but that was alright. I was happy to be so close to light, people, and a phone I could use. Right before the exit, there was a bridge that went over the highway. When I was about to pass under the bridge, I saw a person jogging on it. I stopped and looked up in surprise. I could only make out the silhouette, yet I clearly saw a woman, ponytail, small athletic build, crossing the bridge. What woman would jog around midnight on a closed road to a highway with a wooded area on both sides of the bridge? A few seconds later, she was gone. I looked if I could make her out within the darkness, but I couldn't. Still weirded out, I continued walking and passed under the bridge. A couple meters further down the highway, I took the exit. Now in order to take this exit by foot, I had to get over the guardrail because there was thick bushes too close to the side that I was on. So basically I was walking down the road, down the exit to the gas station. On the right of me, behind the bushes, there was a trail. If you decided to walk up the trail, you would arrive back at the bridge I mentioned. So I was walking down the exit road slowly, because it was slippery, but also with a steady pace, because I did not want to get hit by a passing car. And then it happened. Someone jumped on me from behind and pushed me face first into the ground in the middle of the road. I screamed in sudden terror and turned around, ignoring the pain in my chin and right ear. The person was already on their feet again. I screamed again in shock and surprise. It was a woman in her mid-twenties wearing the jogging attire. It had been the same person I saw minutes earlier on the bridge. She shrieked and with wide eyes and saliva dripping out of her mouth, she charged at me again. Suddenly I felt a sharp pain in my left eye. The woman scratched over my eyes and poked her fingers deep into my left eyeball. I stumbled backwards. And when she came running at me again, I threw her against the guardrail with her back first. The sound of the impact was cringeworthy. I broke down in the middle of the road, clutching my left eye. Moments passed and I wasn't attacked again. Against all the pain in my eye, I looked up through the tears in both of my eyes and saw the woman heading up the trail towards the bridge. Again, fast. Adrenaline shot through my body. The pain felt numb as I rushed down the exit road, falling on my rear end several times during the process. I was panicking like an animal. I just wanted to escape that place. I reached the gas station, basically jumping against the door and throwing it open. The guy behind the counter was shocked seeing me. I was bleeding a bit and my eye was swollen shut at this point. To make a long story short, the guy at the gas station called the police and an ambulance. The officer searched the area, but found nobody. I'm at home now, in the apartment that I inhabit alone, and I'm still terrified. I can't comprehend why this woman attacked me, but I know for certain that she went for a run in the middle of the night just to find victims like me. This happened in New York City years ago when I was a freshman in college. I was out partying one night with some friends. I wasn't drunk or on any hard drugs, but I definitely smoked a blunt or two. Around 3 a.m. we went our separate ways. I got off the train and began my walk home. 
I had to take the longer route home that night because some of the train lines were under maintenance. When I got off the train, I realized that I had to walk past a cemetery and started to feel uneasy, but I wasn't afraid for any real reason. About 10 blocks and I'm home. I always saw trucks lined up on the cemetery blocks, being it was a desolate area. I assumed that the truckers would park their trucks by the cemetery to take naps or sleep before continuing their routes. Back then, I thought nothing of it. A few minutes after getting off the train, I heard a faint sound of what I guess was a car truck door being shut behind me. I turned around and saw nothing. I scanned my surroundings once quickly and didn't see anyone behind me or ahead of me, as far as I could see. I kept walking, this time a bit faster. About a minute later, I hear footsteps behind me. I turned so quick and saw the man walking fast a few feet behind me. When he saw me, he began to catcall me, making kissing noises. I was used to these catcalls, especially living in New York City. By my house, there would be a line of men on the corner every morning, waiting to be picked up for construction work. Every time I passed him to go to the store, I would get catcalled and harassed. So I ignored him and kept walking, but definitely faster this time. A few seconds later, he was running to catch up with me, and he was now at my side, speaking to me in Spanish, which I don't speak. He grabbed my arm tightly and began pulling me towards him. When I started screaming and fighting him off, he pushed me up against the cemetery fence, and in the midst of this, my heart sank to the floor as I thought I was about to be raped, or worse. Seconds later, he had me off my feet by both arms, and his face turned white in the moonlight. A face of pure horror as he looked past me into the cemetery, fixated on something. He let out a blood-curdling scream and let me go. As I dropped to the floor, he was already across the street and running out of sight. Choking on my tears, shaking, beside myself, I picked myself up and ran so fast for the last few blocks to my house. I didn't turn around to look inside the cemetery once. I did not turn around at all. I did not stop until I was home. I never took that train again or walked past that cemetery again. And to be honest, I never told my parents and only told a handful of friends over the years because to this day, I still don't understand what happened, but something probably saved my life. This happened to me this morning and it reminded me of the story that I saw on Let's Not Me about the smiling man. So here it is. I've had a lot of trouble sleeping recently, so a lot of the time, if it gets to 8 or 9 in the morning, I'll stop trying and go get some stuff done early. Last night was one of those nights, so I decided to take my dogs out for a short walk in the park beside my house. I'm never afraid of walking at night. I'm tallish and live in a quiet suburb, so the fact that it was dark didn't really worry me. I head out with my dogs and go into the park which is partially lit by lamps, but it's still quite dark. When I was a kid, there's this one stretch of unlit pathway that used to scare me in the dark. So when I'm walking there, I'm more aware of my surroundings because of that. As we start walking along the bit of path, one of my dogs, Alfie, turns around and starts barking. I turn around and notice a man jogging behind me. As he gets about 10 feet behind me, he just stops immediately, then starts walking towards me. I got mild alarm bells already, but I keep calm and nod at him as he walks past me. I couldn't make out his features much, but I did notice that he was staring directly at me, keeping eye contact even as he passed me. I said a short, how are you?" as he passes, but he stays completely silent. As soon as he's 10 feet past me, he starts jogging again, down towards the part of the path lined with trees. I'm properly spooked now, so I take out my phone and send a voice message to a friend group, WhatsApp, explaining to them what just happened. I'm just done explaining this when I hear noise and turn around. The guy is jogging behind me again. To get some context, there's only one path, and he was in front of me. In order to get behind me without me seeing, he would have to run to an area under the trees, turn around, creep past me across the grass quietly, then come back up the path behind me. 
I turn around to watch him come up to me, stop jogging, walk past. I say the same sort of sentence again, and then he jogs off. I decide I'm getting back to my fucking house. But the little laneway that leads up to my road is up ahead, which means I would have to keep walking the same way. I get about 50 meters up the stretch of path in between lampposts when Alfie starts making the grumbling pre-barked noises again. I look up and there he is ahead of me just standing beneath one of the orange lights looking in my direction. My heart is fucking thumping but no I'm definitely going to keep facing that direction no way that I'm turning around. I had seen another guy just riding his bike around the park and there are houses that connect to it so I'm not completely isolated and I've got a big dog. The laneway to my road is past him so I let my dog pull me up the path. As soon as we get to him, Alfie tried to move towards him. This caused him to have to move and shift position. I pull Alfie away and start talking to the dog saying, Okay, let's go home. Come on, this way. And I don't stop talking until we get out of the park, feeling my back completely exposed the whole time. My house is just across from the laneway, so I make my way really quickly towards the gate. Just as I'm about to push in the code, a loud sound like a bin falling overcomes me from behind, from the other row of houses, the ones that back onto the park. I spin around to look at my neighbors in case one of them had opened their door to go to work. Nobody. Not a sound. Fuck that. I put the gate code into the gate quickly and make my way inside as fast as possible. I went to my room and fell straight asleep and I'm never going to that park alone at night again. That guy was the biggest fucking creep and I hope I never run into him again. Some crazy people can show it in their eyes. Just returned from a walk around my neighborhood and my fiance and I just saw the most creepiest thing. There is a neighborhood cat that will sometimes follow us on walks and tonight she came out to walk with us. We were turning back to head home when a man up the street came walking down with his German Shepherd in our direction. The cat froze in someone's driveway giving clear signs that she's not okay with a man and his dog approaching her. But still he walked towards her more. We hung around a house wondering what he was doing as he commanded his dog to sit in front of her only a couple feet away. They both stared at each other. Man was silent. Dog was growling and she hissed. I had a very bad feeling and I didn't want to walk on until he left. But he continued to stand there with his dog, almost to intimidate a cat. My fiance then told him to leave the cat alone and he didn't turn back to look at us once. Instead, he kept staring at the cat. We waited for a few more minutes and he repeated, leave the cat alone. The man very slowly backed off, said something to us, which I found incredibly weird, crossed the street and walked back in the direction where he came from. We both felt he was up to no good, especially since he never said a word to us, not even to mind your business or I'm not hurting the cat, like this was not odd. It's almost as if we weren't there or something, because he was not weirded out by us watching him. Super weird. So to preface this post, I was a 20 year old male, 6'2", 240 pounds, not a small or weak looking guy. I wanted to lose some weight for a while now and had been going on walks for a bit, sometimes during the evening or very late at night. It was Florida and gets hot unless it's nighttime. Plus, like I said, I'm a big dude. I got nothing to worry about, or so I thought. One fateful night, I decided to go out walking around the neighborhood around 3 a.m. in a big puffy jacket with black pants. My walk was going good as usual and was actually getting close to the end of it. Then this old school wood paneled vehicle passes by and goes into a driveway somewhat in front of me. I barely think anything of it. Always three to six cars go by on one of these late night excursions. What happens next is what unsettled me. This fucking van pulls back out of the driveway with its lights off after I pass the driveway. Luckily I wasn't listening to any music or I wouldn't have heard it. 
The van proceeds to pull out of the driveway towards me and stops right behind me. At this point, I know I don't want to end up like some kind of horror movie character, so I book it in the opposite direction. I go down an off-branching street and keep going down random streets to give me as much time as possible. I ended up hiding in some random ass bushes in someone's yard and stay there for a bit. I wanted to text my mom, but I was scared and didn't want the light of my phone to give me away, so I watched for any signs of them. Nothing for five minutes. Just as you think the coast is clear, boom, I hear a car coming down the street and it's those fucks, but with their lights on this time. I'm pretty hidden in these bushes against someone's house, so they just go by, but my heart is beating so fast at that moment and I'm terrified. I wait a bit more till I truly believe the coast is clear and get back to my house. I wake up my mom and we call the cops and I give them as much info as possible. They said that they would patrol the neighborhood and I don't hear anything more. I just can't help thinking about that event and what their motives were. I always try to debunk shit like that but all their actions pointed to wanting to do something to me. But what did they want to do? I'm not a pretty young lady, I'm a very large menacing dude. My neighborhood is not even nice enough to rob, very just middle class. And what the fuck am I going to have on me while walking at 2am? So I just can't help to think that maybe they didn't want to kidnap me, or mug me, but kill me. It freaks me out to this day. So about a year and a half ago, I was 16. I had taken on a job of babysitting my aunt's dogs in the Bronx while she was away on business. I don't exactly know the breed, but this dog was a powerhouse, more than capable of taking someone down. Her name was Dolly. I introduced myself to her in my aunt's presence to ensure she knew who I was before showing up alone later. I was told to walk her about four times a day. She's very well trained. Doesn't really bark, which is what makes this encounter more creepy. It was late, like 2am, and she adorably woke me up for a walk by digging her nose into my arm. When we begin our walk, it's really dark out. You wouldn't be able to see anyone's face from a few feet away. The streets were empty, but that's expected at 2am. It's a suburban kind of area in the Bronx, and the sidewalks are very narrow. You can't walk down it in twos. Dolly was slow because she liked to smell literally everything. Here's the creepy encounter. There was this man walking on the same sidewalk as us, maybe 10 feet behind. Dolly went off the sidewalk to where the grass was to sniff a tree. I knew with her that it could take years to be done. So with that, I kind of signaled the man who was a lot closer now to go by and stepped off the narrow sidewalk onto the grass. And I was right, Dolly took forever sniffing this tree. Generally think it was about 10 to 15 minutes. I didn't have a problem with her taking long because I was listening to good music with my AirPods and watching her go all around the tree and it was an enjoyable sight. Then all of a sudden, Dolly begins barking ferociously at something behind me. It startled the crap out of me because it was so abrupt and I hadn't even seen her bark like that. I quickly turn around to see what would make her do this and there was the same man. He hadn't gotten any more forward in the direction he was coming in since I signaled him to pass me. Still about 5 feet away, he wasn't on his phone, he was just standing there looking at me. Dolly was going crazy at him and he had little to no reaction. Now I got a closer look at him, he was very tall, taller than me and I'm 6'3". He was bald and his face was expressionless, although half of it was covered by the darkness of the night. I realized that this dude must have stood there staring at me for about 10 to 15 minutes. He definitely wasn't trying to talk to me in that time because my music wasn't that loud. I would have heard him. I don't think he was admiring my dog because even with her barking at her, his eyes were zoned in on me. We had about a 10 second moment of staring each other in the face. Normally I would have asked him if he needed something, but I just had the worst feeling ever. He right away reminded me of the dancing tall smiling man creepypasta story, which I think was the cause for the fear in the moment. I turned from him and felt safe with the ginormous dog. 
I took my ear pods out of my ears so I could hear if he followed. Dolly walked with me, but her eyes stayed on him the whole time. Instead of continuing down the street, I crossed the block. As I started to do this, the man absolutely sprinted in the opposite direction he originally was heading in. The sound of his feet rapidly hitting the floor set an uppercut to my guts. I turned around and watched him do this. He ran as if his life depended on it. I watched him run till he turned the corner and was out of view. I held Dolly's leash tight and hurried back to the house. Dolly kept looking back and growling. When we got back, I locked the door and made sure Dolly slept in the bed with me. For those of you who frequent the sub, the fight or flight response is one that's discussed frequently. Later, this term is updated to fight, flight, or freeze. To better encompass the range of human responses to acute stress, lucky for me, I've never been a freezer. However, that doesn't mean I always choose one of the other two responses either. Instead, when I am under stress, my brain goes into overdrive, rapidly throwing up possible situations to my current problem. The more stressed I am, the faster it ticks. In my first post on the sub, I told a creepy encounter where I chose flight. In the second, I chose fight. This is the story of my brain decided on a different direction. It was an early evening in the late 2000s. I was in college, walking home from class along a busy street in a crappy neighborhood that was all I could afford to live in at the time. Out of nowhere, a car pulls up right next to me and slams on the brakes. Get in the car. The driver yells out the window at me, immediately aggressive. What? I take in the scene. Old, small, beat up red car. Four passengers, all guys, relatively fit. I'm badly outnumbered. Not good. The two in the front are leaning forward in their seats staring at me, agitated. Most likely on something. Can't see much of the guys in the back except for they're crammed in there. Front two are not wearing seat belts. Really not good. On top of that, despite other people being around, I'm in a neighborhood in a city where people don't stop to help, don't call the cops, don't get involved when they witness violence or crimes. No one walking past has slowed down or even turned our way. Really, really not good. In the couple of seconds it takes me to soak it in, the driver decides to fill in the silence. Get in the fucking car. I said get in the fucking car now. We're going to a party and you're coming with us. Even more aggressively than before. Oh boy, there my brain goes. Tick, 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 tick. This tone, this manner. This guy is expecting me to refuse. He's expecting me to get bitchy. It's like he's just waiting for me to escalate the interaction. This was before I was active online. I had never heard of incels or MRAs or any of that stuff. But this guy is acting like a guy who was sick of girls refusing his advances. He's had enough, and this time he's going to put his foot down. My brain is throwing up every possible response I can make, playing out the most likely outcome, and knocking them back one by one. Finally, it lands. Though I would never know what it's called until many years later, I had just discovered fawn mode. My face cracks into a huge smile. Oh my god, that sounds like so much fun. Suddenly, I drop the smile to a look of devastation. Oh no, but I can't go today. I have dinner with my family. This sucks so much. I'd rather go to the party, but thanks for inviting me. I start slowly walking up the street, not breaking eye contact, smiling and waving, but trying to close the distance I'd have to dash if shit goes down. The car creeps along, keeping pace with me. The driver sighs. Just get in the car. Far less aggressive. Oh my god, I can't believe this is working. I lean into a dizzy persona I have now adopted. I'd love to, really. I want to go so much, but my family is waiting for me up the street. But you guys are so nice. I hope you have such a good time. Next time, I will for sure go. You guys are super fun, right? Yeah? I can tell. The driver posture became less tense. His grip of the steering wheel was more relaxed, and is at the beginning of a reluctant grin lifting on the side of his mouth? He likes the flattery. Yeah, you guys look super fun. Party with some cute fun guys? I'm so there. Call me for the next party, yeah? 
Promise me, you'll call me. I stick out my thumb and pinky to the side of my head and start nodding. You have to call me, yeah? Passion starts nodding back at first and finally slumps back in his seat. Yeah, yeah. I keep chattering. Have so much fun though. Have extra fun for me. I hate that I can't be there. But promise me, you'll have a great time and promise you'll call me for the next one. The driver finally leans back in his chair and smiles. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, alright, yeah. Next time. And finally dries off. The stupid fuckers had seemed to have forgotten that they didn't even know me from Eve and didn't even have my number. I wave at them, wait for them to get out of sight and finally breathe a sigh of relief. I power walk at the last few hundred meters home, go upstairs and tell Matt and Lisa what happened. Probably don't need to mention that living in that city was getting old. This happened literally 30 minutes ago. I'm a 15 year old female, short petite sized. I live in Florida so it was raining all morning today so I decided to go on a run in the evening. It was a regular run. I don't like to run through my neighborhood just because there's too many turns and it messes me up. I'm on the side of the highway on the sidewalk where usually bikers and people walking their dogs are. There's a fire station close to me and I feel relatively safe most of the time. I carry pepper spray and always have my phone on me. I stopped at the two mile point, turned around and started walking, texting my mom where I was and that I was coming home. Then I changed my music. I noticed a golf cart stopped ahead of me that I had run by before that same day. I recognized it by the smell of weed coming from it and occupying it was the old man who I was earlier not paying attention to because there was a golf course right there where usually old people go to. I walk past it and he tries to say something to me. I completely ignore it and just start sprinting away. I turn my head back and the headlights are on and the man is following me in his golf cart. I'm freaking out at this point so I call my mom. I'm crying while I'm actually running for my life. I see a group of old people in a cart going into the neighborhood so I flag them down for help and get in their cart. At this point the guy following me is right there and continues literally following the people I'm with trying to get me. My mom is pissed and thinks that the people who literally saved my life are the ones that are trying to kidnap me. She eventually gets there and figures out that they are the ones that helped me instead of kidnap me. I know this story is nothing serious and I'm thankful that nothing bad happened to me, but I keep thinking what would have happened if those people weren't there and he got me. I could never outrun a golf cart and there was nothing but random neighborhoods around me. I was walking my dog in my neighborhood and I noticed that this man was wearing a black cap with a black mask staring at me strangely for quite some time. I feel a little uneasy with the way he's staring at me and decide to speed walk away with my dog and when I think I'm safe I notice the same guy from before is approaching me. He tells me as he gets closer, Hi, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Kevin and I would like to be your friend. At this point, I'm creeped out and frightened. I know that I should have immediately ran for the hills, but I was in shock and couldn't move an inch. But my dog, who doesn't bark at strangers, suddenly barked at him. Normally loves people he meets on the street. The guy seemed to be a bit frightened by my dog, but he stayed until my dog started to let out a series of barks at him. Thankfully, he finally left me alone and I hightailed it out of there with my dog. I have no idea if I'm just overthinking, but I can't help to feel like this guy had an ulterior motive. I'm a small girl, so I definitely would have been overpowered by him had he decided to actually do something. I don't know if it was a coincidence or not, but I'm extremely thankful to have my dog in my life. I don't know what would have happened if I didn't have him with me. I gave him extra belly scratches and an extra yummy dinner that night. I'm a 17 year old female. Tonight I finished dinner before my parents even got their food served. I asked if I could go on a night walk. We went to Santa Monica for dinner because we were on a trip to LA. 
I left the restaurant and walked down to Ocean Boulevard. I walked all the way down to the crossroads and everything was fine. The way back to the restaurant was a whole other can of worms. As I walked, a man asked me if I wanted a beer. I turned him down and told him that I didn't drink. But that isn't the end of this encounter. He asked if I was sure, to which I replied yes. After that, he surprisingly left me alone. I decided to walk on the pathway so I could look out to the black ocean, blending in with the sky. It was memorizing. As I continued walking, I came across a group of three homeless guys. I gave a head nod to be polite, and one of the guys got up. At first, I thought nothing of it, but as I continued, I saw him pursuing me out of the corner of my eye. I walked a little bit faster and so did he. I quickly turned across the street and he followed. I sped walk up the street towards the restaurant with him still on my heels. I turned my head to see him maybe six feet away, then I ran. I raced through the front doors of a tourist shop and hid there. I texted my family about where I was and they came to pick me up. I know it's rather anticlimactic, but it was easily the scariest moment of my life. I'm so glad I got away from that creepo. I'm a 30 year old disabled woman. I wear leg supports and I struggle with walking. I was bringing my bull massive back to the vets. I was walking down the road to my vet struggling a little as my dog can be a little excitable. He's 42 kgs and can take me for walks sometimes. My mom actually walked with us, but due to her sciatica, she had trailed behind. I had a bit of a struggle with my dog's head wedged in a bush when I heard my mom say, Excuse me. She called out for me to wait, and she walked right next to me until we got further down the road. I turned back to see a guy in a hoodie dip down the road and give me a quick look back. It turns out that this guy had walked past my mom onto the street sped up to get right behind me and as I was focused on my dog, I hadn't even noticed that he was right behind me. My mom had walked as quickly as she could and made a bunch of noises so that the guy was aware that she was with me. He dodged after realizing. I felt sick. The fact that I hadn't even been aware, the fact that I couldn't have defended myself or my dog. The worst part is it happened about 10 minutes away from my home. I haven't took my dog out since and I can't get this out of my head. Luckily, my mom is a legend. So this story takes place in the late summer of 2007. I was 18 years old, had graduated high school and was looking forward to starting college in just a couple weeks. I'm a tall guy, a bit over six foot and I was lanky in build back then. My dad and I had a yearly tradition of going on a trip to Reading where we would stay in a hotel for a weekend and go to the water slides, see a movie, grab dinner from a fancy restaurant or two, and generally just have a good time away from home. It was Saturday and we had gone to the water slides all day. Once the sun was setting, we decided to go to In-N-Out for dinner and then I had planned to go to the movies later in the evening. We were going to go see Rush Hour 3, but on this particular occasion, my dad had gotten pretty wiped out and decided that he would just relax at the hotel. I still wanted to go see the movie, so I said it was okay. He dropped me off at the movie theater, which was only a couple miles away from the hotel that we were staying at, and I told him that he didn't have to wait to pick me up. I just walked back after the movie. While I was waiting in line, I noted that there was a surprising amount of people around my age all going to see the movie called Superbad. It was starting 10 minutes later than Rush Hour 3, and I was curious to see what it was all about. That I changed to that movie. It was a great time. The movie let out close to midnight, and I was full of energy. The moon was full and it was warm at night in Reading, low 70s. So I was in good spirits as I started leisurely walking back to the hotel. On my way back, I noticed a silver car pulling out of the nearby street. It was late and on a quieter part of the city, so there wasn't a whole lot of traffic at that time. So this car was notable. It slowly rolled up to me and the passenger rolled down the window. 
Inside was a guy who might have been in his late 20s or early 30s. He was clean shaven, with dark hair and decently dressed. He asked me if I needed a ride. I thought it was a little odd, but he was smiling and seemed friendly enough. I had such a great day and was still full of energy though, so I just said no thanks and told him that I was just going to walk back to my hotel. His smile faltered for a minute and he asked me if I was sure. I nodded, assuring him that I'd be alright. He shrugged his shoulders and asked me one last time if I was certain. I said yeah and began to walk. He drove off and I thought that was the end of it, but it wasn't. About two minutes later I was still walking along the street and I saw a car coming down the opposite side of the road. There was a cement divider on the center of the road and it only had a couple areas where the car could turn around. I had been distracted with my own thoughts and wasn't looking for it, but I thought it might have been the same car. I glanced back and I could just barely see where the road curved and the car turned around at the same intersection. It turned around and came driving back my way, and now I knew it was the same car, with the same guy I talked to earlier. I saw him looking at me as he passed by me again. Chills went down my spine. I began walking faster but not too much as I was giving him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he thought he forgot did something, but then realized he hadn't. Either way, I was paying attention now. Sure enough, as I walked forward, I saw him drive on the opposite side of the road again. Any doubts I had just appeared, and now I was on edge, ready to bolt if I saw his car slow down next to me. I saw him drive by again, but also some other truck drove down the opposite side of the street and his car passed by me. At this point, I couldn't see where he could turn around, but I knew the streetlights he could use weren't too far ahead either. I looked around, and across the street from me were some businesses, and they had bushes in front of them. I waited until I couldn't see the silver car anymore, and I ran across the street and hid behind the bushes, using them for cover. I watched and waited. I tightened my shoes tight as my heart was pounding, hoping that he wouldn't come by again. I saw the silver car drive by my hiding spot and let out a sigh of relief as he didn't suddenly decide to drive into the parking lot where I was, but I didn't move either. I knew he could turn around again, so I just kept waiting. He drove by again on the opposite side of the street, then I started counting for 10 minutes, 600 seconds. I decided if I saw the car drive by, I would start again, and I would still be ready to run just in case. The 10 minutes went by and I didn't see his car again. I got up and shakily made my way back to the hotel, keeping an eye out for any new cars coming my way. None did. My dad woke up when I got back to the hotel room and I told him what happened. He got up and took a look around the hotel parking lot before saying that we should lock the door, draw the curtains, and get some sleep. We left early the next day. I'm really glad I didn't get into that car with the guys that night because I recently heard that there's been a number of kidnappings in that area with people getting taken after getting into seemingly friendly strangers' cars at night. I'm a 20-year-old male. I have been going running and walking around 9.15 to 10 at night over the past four months in a park next to my neighborhood. Usually, there are some people jogging, homeless people, and drug users either hanging out or walking around the park around these hours. Usually when I run, I see around 5-7 to seven people in the park. Regardless of their looks, I usually don't feel scared, nervous, or uncomfortable when I see them in the distance or if I run past them. But today, I saw a person maybe 100 yards away from me holding what looked like a large white object in front of them. I'm not sure if it was because of the caffeine I took before my walk, but when I saw that, I immediately got anxious and got this feeling that something was not right. I was debating myself whether to keep running in the park or not, but after a couple seconds, I just decided to sprint back to my house. This is the first time I ever felt like this since I started running at night. When I was a freshman in college, I lived in one of the dorms that was on the remote end of campus. 
The only way back to the building that didn't add a ton of time to the walk was a bike footpath that had the reputation of being sketchy. Before going off to school, I had taken self-defense classes due to previous encounters with creeps. This left me on relatively high alert anytime I was in a public space. I'm a horror movie fanatic, so it's difficult to truly scare me, even in situations that wrestling should. On my way back to the dorm one night, I crossed a bridge on the final stretch. The main path intersected with an incredibly dimly lit stretch of sidewalk that I had never seen used. As I crossed the bridge, I noticed someone on the sidewalk, which stuck out to me since I walked by there several times daily and had never seen anyone use it before. The person was wearing a black hoodie despite the heat, with the hoodie pulled over their face, turned towards the ground so it wasn't visible. They were walking in the opposite direction of the path that I was on. Before reaching a building that would have blocked my view, I turned around to see this person's direction again. I had a strange feeling that urged me to look. The person had turned around and started walking towards me. However, when I looked at them, they paused for a second, then turned around and resumed walking in the direction they had been. They weren't looking at their phone or anything. They could have needed to get something or plans could have changed. They just did a 180 and walked away. The timing was eerie enough to spook me. I could just be paranoid, or I could have just avoided something terrible from happening. I still think about it often and get chills about it five years later. I'm a female. This happened this summer when I was 20 years old, in my sophomore year of college. I stayed in the area with some roommates, rather than going home for the summer. Being in a relatively safe area, Santa Barbara, California, I went out for a four mile run after dark. About halfway through the run, I noticed someone biking behind me. I occasionally glanced back to check on them. I was on a relatively main road at this point, so luckily for the most part, I wasn't alone with this guy. I only made two turns that he copied me on, so I wasn't convinced at this point that he was following me. The thing that freaked me out though was that he was matching my pace perfectly. And keep in mind, I'm not a fast runner. A bike should easily surpass my pace. So I finally get to the point about a half mile from my apartment when I have to turn off the main road to get home. I decided to play it safe and go to the gas station and call my roommate to pick me up. I was hyperventilating at this point. What was even more comforting was that I recognized a cashier who also went to my college. Thankfully my roommate answered and it was a short drive away and headed over. When I walked out of the gas station I noticed the biker standing by his bike on the corner opposite the gas station. As soon as I got in the car he jumped on his bike and pedaled off. I'm a female. When I was 18 in high school, I walked about a mile to and from every day. I liked the exercise and got comfortable navigating what some would call a bad area. Naturally, I had lots of creepy encounters over the years. Here's a few that I remember the best. 1. It was the start of summer before my junior year. I was a few months shy of 16 and I have always looked incredibly young for my age. I'm still mistaken for a younger teenager, so that should give you a good sense of how young I looked. I just started going down the road to my neighborhood when a couple in a beat up white car pull up beside me. The man looked significantly older than the woman that he was with. I can only describe him as haggard. He had this 1000 yard stare that immediately raised red flags. It was almost like he was staring straight through me. The lady in the passenger seat had bad teeth and looked as though she had been picking on her skin for years. Another red flag. She asked me if I needed a ride and I remember she had a really kind, warm voice, but the smile wasn't genuine at all. Given that it was less than a quarter of a mile from my house and I was creeped out, I respectively declined. They peeled off and I booked it the rest of the way home. Number two. I had to cross several parking lots on my way, given that most of the walk was sidewalkless. 
On two separate occasions, a car driven by a single older man stopped in front of me at the exits to coerce me into their cars. They would leave pretty quickly after I refused. These interactions never lasted more than 20 seconds. 3. A white sedan with tinted windows once followed me from the start of my neighborhood to the start of my street, looping through a cul-de-sac and driving really slowly behind me. I pretended to pick up a phone call after making eye contact, and they finally sped off. At the time, I was 15, walking to church on a Sunday morning by myself. It was around 9 a.m. and there's this big black SUV sitting in an empty parking lot. As I walked by an older man, maybe in his 30s, he called me from his window asking what my name was. Again, I was only 15, so I was naive and assumed that maybe he knew me or my family. We were in a small town. I stopped and told him my first name. He nodded his head towards me, bit his lip, and responded, Come over here. This was when I realized something was wrong. I ignored his invitation and practically ran the remaining two minute walk to my church. Luckily he didn't follow me. As an adult now, I wish I would have taken a mental image of his license plate and called the cops. Was he lurking in that parking lot waiting to find the perfect prey? Or did he just need to ask me a question? Directions? Who knows, but judging from his demeanor, I don't think it was innocent. A few months ago, I was staying in my partner's apartment for a few weeks by myself. I don't quite remember why I was out so late, but it was around 1am and I had just got off transit. Only one other guy got off with me and he was rather tall and walked briskly. I was ahead of him at first, but he quickly passed me because even though I have a quick stride, I'm pretty short for a guy. I normally live in that city, so I'm not sure why, but the streets were incredibly empty. I remember thinking that because there wasn't a single car on the road. We were literally a five minute walk away from the major university, so it was very odd not to see a single person or car. The only lights on were the street lights. I spent nights at my partner's place before, and I never remembered it being this dead. Anyways, I had walked down the street and was coming up to the intersection where I had to turn left. I noticed this guy that was standing around the front of the bank that was on the corner. The guy ahead of me walked by him with no problem and went straight. I was a bit weary but didn't think much of him until I was a meter away and he had sidestepped to be in front of me and held his arms wide open, grinning at me. I glanced in the direction of the guy who left the train with me but he was across the street already. My heart was pounding at this point, and I think I may have started to disassociate from the stress because I can't even remember what he looked like, even though I was looking directly at him. If this sounds like an overreaction, I have a history of multiple cases of CSA by different people and I have PTSD, among other mental illnesses that I still struggle with. I remember being frozen for a moment, and then, on instinct, I very politely said, No thank you, and took a step to the right, towards the street, and tried to keep walking forward. He moved in front of me again, still with his arms wide open, expecting me to hug him, still grinning. For some reason, I repeated my polite refusal and sidestepped him again, instead of running in the opposite direction. Luckily, he let me pass, but I could hear him following me from a short distance. I was wondering what to do at that moment. I couldn't fight him. There was no one around. If I tried to call someone, he was close enough to grab me, and I wasn't able to run very fast. Suddenly, I hear his steps speed up into a sprint, and before I could react, he slowed down again. I walked a bit faster. He repeated the same thing over and over again. I wondered if I should go on a different path so he doesn't know where I live. It wasn't the best idea since I didn't know the city that well and he probably knew it better than I did. I decided I know I could find help in the lobby, at least compared to if I went somewhere else. He sprinted at me again and I turned around and loudly asked him, Do you need help? 
I remember not feeling my body and feeling lightheaded from anxiety. Despite how panicked I felt, my voice came out clearly and I sounded disdainful. I don't think I meant to sound like he was annoying and inconveniencing me, but that's how it came out. Then he spoke for the first time and responded, No, do you need help? I didn't say anything and just turned back around and kept speed walking towards my partner's apartment building. He was still following, but now he was talking. I can't remember much of what he said. I was just focused on getting back without being assaulted. Eventually, I heard him stop walking. I know, I'm scary. I don't know why he said that. I took this opportunity and put more distance between us and kept speed walking. He didn't keep following though, he just kept saying, I know, I'm scary. He got louder and louder the further I got. I got to the door of the apartment building and looked back again. He was no longer in sight. I unlocked the door to the building, then ran up the stairs instead of taking the elevator. When I got to the apartment, I went straight to the window because the unit had a large window facing the street. I wanted to see if I could see him. The streets were empty. I texted my partner about this experience, but he was already asleep and wouldn't see it. Luckily, I never saw that man again, and I hope I never will. I was walking home from work at 10 p.m., feeling tired and anxious. It had been a long day at the office, and I couldn't wait to get home and put my feet up. As I made my way down the dark, desolate street, I couldn't shake this feeling that I was being watched. I kept glancing over my shoulder, but each time I did, no one was there. Despite my unease, I continued walking, trying to ignore that feeling of dread that was creeping over me. But then, out of the corner of my eye, I saw something that made my blood run cold. A man was following me, walking at a leisurely pace, just a few feet behind me, but across the street. He was tall with broad shoulders and had this menacing look in his eyes. In his hand, it looked like he had a knife as the street lights were shining off of it. Panicked, I quickened my pace, but the man did the same. Now I could hear his footsteps pounding the pavement behind me. He was getting closer and closer with each passing second. I knew I had to do something or he would catch up to me. I looked around, searching for any kind of help, but the street was empty and the windows of the buildings were dark. I was completely alone. With no other options, I started to run. I sprinted down the street, my heart pounding in my chest and my breath coming in short, ragged gasps. I could hear the man behind me. His heavy footsteps were pounding on the pavement as he chased me. As I ran, I could feel my fear giving way to desperation. I didn't know how much longer I could keep going. I was getting tired and the man behind me was getting closer and closer. Just when I thought that I couldn't run any further, I saw a glimpse of hope. Up ahead, I could see the entrance to the subway station. If I could just make it there, I could lose the man in the crowds and get to safety. With a renewed sense of determination, I pushed myself harder, sprinting towards the subway entrance. I could still hear the man behind me, his footsteps getting louder and louder as he closed the distance between us. I was so close, I could almost taste it. But then, just as I was about to reach the entrance, I felt a sharp pain in my leg. I looked down and saw the man had thrown the knife at me and it had lodged itself into my thigh. Despite the pain, I didn't stop. I gritted my teeth and kept running, dragging my injured leg behind me. I could see the entrance of the subway station and I knew I had to get there. With one final burst of energy, I stumbled through the entrance and into the semi-crowded station. I looked around, hoping to see a police officer or something who could help me but I was just met with a sea of indifferent faces. I was alone, and I knew that the man with the knife was still out there, looking for me. I had to get out of there fast. I limped to the nearest train, hoping to find a safe place to hide, but as I boarded the train, I heard the voice behind me. There you are. I've been looking for you. I turned to see him standing on the platform, a larger knife in hand. He was smiling, and I could see the madness in his eyes. I knew I had to act fast. I grabbed the nearest thing next to me, which happened to be a newspaper. 
I used it to shield myself, and the man actually lunged at me with a knife. I could feel the blade slicing the paper, but it didn't reach my skin. I fought back, using all my strength to push the man away from me. He stumbled backwards, but didn't fall. Instead, he regained his balance and came at me again, his eyes blazing with anger. I knew I couldn't hold him off much longer. I needed to find a way to escape. I looked around, searching for an exit, but the train was literally packed with people doing nothing, and there was nowhere for me to go. Just when I thought all was lost, I heard the sound. The man with the knife fell to the ground, and I saw a police officer standing over him with his taser out. Are you okay? One of the officers asked me, rushing over to me. We've been looking for this guy for weeks, and we're glad we finally caught him. The officer helped me to my feet. You're safe now. As he led me off the train, we'll make sure you can't hurt anyone else. As I left the train station in the ambulance, I knew I would never forget the terror of that night, but at least I was alive and safe. This happened many years ago, and he's still locked up to this day. I was walking my dog at 9 p.m., just like any other night. I had chosen this time because it's usually quiet and peaceful, and my dog loved to sniff around and explore. But this night was different. We turned down this semi-dark alley. I heard voices coming from behind a dumpster. I stopped in my tracks, my heart pounding in my chest. I quickly realized that it was a drug deal. They were in the middle of a transaction, and I knew I stumbled on a dangerous situation. I didn't want to get involved, but I also didn't want to leave. I was afraid if I walked away, the drug dealer would see me and follow me. I looked around, trying to figure out what to do. I spotted a convenience store to the right and decided to make a run for it. I grabbed my dog's leash and started to run. I could hear the dealer shouting behind me, and I knew he was coming after me. I ran as fast as I could, my heart pounding in my chest. As I reached the convenience store, I threw open the door and ran inside. I spotted a cashier behind the counter and ran over to him. Please call the police. There's a man outside with a gun and he's after me. The cashier looked shocked but didn't hesitate. He picked up the phone and dialed 911. Within minutes, the police arrived. The drug dealer was arrested and I was able to go home safely. I was shaken, but I was grateful that I had made it out of that situation alive. From that day on, I never walked my dog at night again. I knew that danger could strike at any time, and I didn't want to put myself or my dog at risk. I'm a 30-year-old female. I have a 31 kg German Shepherd, 10 months old. She's an absolute nightmare to walk during the day, as she hates other dogs, so I walk her anytime between 8pm and 10pm. She used to hate people, but I trained her out of it three months back, and she would generally ignore people these days, as long as they wait to be allowed forward with a handshake from me. We live in a small village in the middle of nowhere, and our estate is on the edge of this village. Our usual route is up and down the estate, onto the main road, and then we follow it through the village and back. Usually takes about 30 to 45 minutes, depending if she's stopping to sniff every blade of grass. A couple weeks ago, we went out for a walk a bit later than usual, so it was pitch black. We got on the main road and she sits while I check before we cross. I noticed headlights in the distance leading out of the village. The car was parked, which was strange, as there's nothing up there but fields and cattle. Callie has also clocked it. We crossed the road, but Callie was leaning around me, keeping her eyes on it. I'll mention she doesn't like cars either, so I thought she was just prepping herself to chase it. We were walking in the opposite direction, and she kept turning around, like every two minutes. I then noticed that it had slowly been driving up and crawling behind us. I stopped to look, thinking they might be lost and need directions. This is when I noticed four men in the car staring at me and my dog. Enter creepy chills. The car sped up a little and then pulled over to the side of the road and parked. 
Callie and I stopped. I was about to cross to the other side of the road when all four men got out of the car and looked at us. Callie lost her mind. She lunged as far as the leash would allow, growling, snarling, and barking. The two men closest to us immediately got back in the car, and the other two paused until Callie started pulling the leash, trying to get at them. One shakes his head and gets back into the car, and the other shortly follows. The car then speeds off. As soon as they were gone, Callie sits and looks up at me, tongue out and everything, like she hadn't just been rabid a moment earlier. She got extra fish treats that night. I have no idea what might have happened had Callie not been the way she is. I still walk her at night, safe in the knowledge that I have a 68 pound death machine with me. I sort of forgot about this whole thing until recently, but this took place over 10 years ago when I was 15 or 16. I was just a bored teen in a somewhat small town and wanted to get off the computer for a bit. So it was late at night, maybe around midnight. Someone like me should have stayed in, but I felt like going for a long walk, which I never did. But hey, what's going to happen to me here? It was a chill place. Once you get past the school in the neighborhood, or to the one end of the neighborhood, there's a long road with some nice houses on it that leads towards a grocery store and a bigger road with four lanes. The long road has a sidewalk, barely any lights, and goes past a big open area with a horse farm and one small waste facility. The waste facility was across the road from the horse field and is up a slight incline. Between it and the road is a dip in the ground for rainwater to accumulate and run beneath the driveway. Meaning, if you drive off the road, you'd basically be going down a small half pipe right there. So I'll walk past the school, past the horse fields, and all the way down the long road to the four lane road. And I kept walking. It's now around 1am and the roads are empty, but they're totally illuminated by the street lights so I felt fine. At some point, this little car speeds down the road, way too close to the sidewalk, and I saw their brake lights come on as they kept driving pretty fast. Something about that car and how close it drove to the sidewalk gave me a major feeling of fear, and it made me feel like I just needed to get home. It wasn't a hey they came close to me fear, but it was a full body fear that I had to go. I didn't think this way at the time, but looking back at it, it felt like someone was thinking, Hey, they look young. Should I go back? While holding their foot lightly on the brake pedal, just enough to slow down gradually. So I walked back for a good 30 to 45 minutes and I was coming back up to the horse field on the dark road. Which meant I just needed to make it past the wide open area before I was at the school, which basically meant I was home. The whole time I kept looking back and watching for cars or someone. But now I was feeling pretty safe because it had been so long and I was on the super dark road. Right before the horse field there's this big front yard of this country house that's down the dirt road. The front yard had a fence but it was just a post with three planks going across it. Which meant any person could easily slide between the planks if they angled themselves right. I was getting to the end of the yard when the car speeds by me again. And I swear it's the same exact shape of the car that passed me before. And I got the same feeling of fear. It was way too dark to get the color, but the shape was unmistakable. I see the brake lights light up, and this time, they slow down drastically before whipping the car around the side of the road and going to the dip at the waste facility. They drove down the incline to circle around and drive back out to the road like a madman in a span of 3-4 to four seconds. No one in their right mind would have used that dip to turn around, even slowly, and whipping the car around that way was abnormal. I swear I was stressing so hard that I was nearly frozen watching them do that, because I knew it was the same car and something bad was definitely going to happen to me. Right at the corner of the front yard by this field, there was a big oak tree growing a bit more than one teenage boy's width away from the fence for the yard. Perfect. The bottom plank for the fence was just barely above the ground, maybe a few inches up the post is all. So it was enough for me to hide if I laid up against it. 
The moment I saw the car headlights turn around and drive towards me, my first instinct was just to dive into the spot between the tree and the plank. I fit perfectly. I managed to get into the place before they had fully turned around. I put the hood over the back of my head and laid there. I fucking heard their brakes sliding as they drove past the yard, and then I heard them speed up and drive away a second later. I didn't look. I kept my head down and was breathing as heavy as possible so that I wouldn't have a full on panic attack. I got up, looked back, and made sure there was no silhouettes of the car and no lights. Then I just booked it down the road to the school. I never went out that late alone again. That was my lesson learned. Trust your gut and always try to find a way to protect yourself if need be. Often, I enjoy walking my dog at nighttime. This is due to the fact that my dog is harder to walk when people are around with their own dogs. So we tend to walk around parks in the area when they become somewhat secluded. I'm not a very big guy. I'm just 5'10 and very lanky and I wouldn't call myself an intimidating figure. However, my 120 pound black boxer lab named Loki could be somewhat considered threatening to most from what I hear. I figured his size would be used as a deterrent for anyone looking to cause nightly troubles. I was dead wrong. On one specific night in the fall of 2016, I can recall an encounter that reminds me of why I'm so reluctant to walk around once daylight falls. This park is one I've been to a couple times and from what I remember, this park is usually empty around 6.30 and later on. Aside from a couple joggers and a few other dog walkers, not many people walk the same path I take. I also like to put my headphones on and listen to music while I walk. But on this night, I chose not to wear them since my phone was on low battery and I wanted to preserve it as long as I could. Anyway, the walk was going as usual. Loki did some of his business and we continued down our usual path. At about midway on our walk, I realized that it had started getting really dark. Since he was done with his business, I decided to cut the walk somewhat short and we took a shortcut that kind of led us off the path. This path had a bunch of trees surrounding the area and there were still leaves on the branches. With that being said, I felt a weird feeling as if I was being watched. I have pretty bad anxiety sometimes, but since I knew this town was safe, I knew nothing was going to happen. Still, I couldn't for the life of me shake off this feeling of being watched. I peered back to see if anyone had been following me out of anxiety, and every single time no one was there. In fact, no one was anywhere. This whole shortcut was essentially secluded. Suddenly, Loki stopped walking and also looked back. I told him, come on boy, we've got to go. One thing that I failed to mention is that he's a big coward. I noticed his tail was tucked between his legs, which is a telltale sign that a dog is afraid. I was also curious, but a bit nervous, but I surely did not want to find out what he heard or noticed. I wanted to get out of there ASAP. I pulled a little and he began to walk, but every now and then I'd see him peer back. After maybe minutes or so of walking, he stopped again and this time began to growl. Despite being a coward, Loki is a bark but no bite kind of dog, so I took the chance to see exactly what he was growling at. It was quite dark so I couldn't see well, so I used my phone's flashlight to see what's up. Trees. Just trees. What he heard was probably some kind of small animal. Once again, I turned around and kept walking. He still continued to peer back once in a while, but this time I noticed it was a lot more frequent. I just said to myself, just squirrels, maybe a bird, and I ignored it. Then I heard what appeared to be actual footsteps and twigs breaking. There is absolutely no way a small animal could produce a sound like that. Loki turned around quick and still with his tail tucked between his legs began to growl and bark. A figure that I can only describe as a man in his early 50s, possibly late 40s, appeared out of the woods. He was dressed in dirty clothes. His hair was long and was graying. He had one hand in his pocket and said to me, 
Nice dog you have there, kid. What breed is he? He's a boxer lab. Oh, I love dogs. Mind if I pet him? The man got closer as he emerged from the trees. As he got closer, I realized he was quite a tall man and a bit burly. Loki instantly got bad vibes. He ran behind me and started to bark at him. Actually, I kind of do mind. My dog doesn't like strangers, so it's probably not the best if you pet him. It's okay. He seems like a friendly guy. Just a little pet won't harm him. The man retorted as he got closer. I felt extremely uncomfortable as he got closer and closer. I don't know why this guy couldn't take no for an answer. I mean, I usually don't allow people to pet him unless he comes up to them first. If he's scared of you, then I usually don't want him to freak out by letting him be pet by a stranger. This is especially the case when the stranger comes out of the woods behind a few trees. I'm really sorry, man. I'm scared that he might bite you or something. I told him as I started to walk away. Like I said before, I wasn't trying to be judgmental or anything. But this dude came from the woods and was possibly trailing us from before. I don't know why you won't let me introduce myself to him. The guy replied angrily. This time I began to speed walk. I was very uncomfortable and my fight or flight instincts began to take over. He followed us and kept muttering curses to himself. I don't know if this man was under the influence of something, but he did not let up. I won't lie, I started to get a little angry. Why can't this guy just take no for an answer? He began to match my speed, almost as if he was trying to catch up to us. Loki and I both took this as a sign to start sprinting a bit. I don't remember much of the running, it was all a blur to me. I do remember the spine tingling feeling of hearing his footsteps rapidly increasing behind me. For a man of his stature, he was quite fast. I also realized that his intentions weren't to pet my dog. No one reasonable would go that far just to pet a dog that clearly wanted nothing to do with him. I looked behind me and he was still in pursuit, maybe about 10 feet behind me, chasing us. I'll never forget the look in his eyes. I've never had anyone look at me like that. A look of killer intent. All for what? Just because he couldn't pet my dog? My instincts told me that he definitely had sinister intent behind that. Finally, the path led to a park exit and onto a busier street. I lived about 10 minutes away from the park and made sure no one was following me and even made sure to walk on the populated side. After what seemed like an eternity, we got home, but I knew for a fact that I was not going to get a minute of sleep. From my window in the porch, I watched all night with Loki just to see if he followed us home. I also made a police report with the help of my parents. After all, this guy was very suspicious, and who knows what his true intentions were. Had his target been someone that couldn't protect themselves or run away, what would he have done? I also often ask myself, what if I had worn my headphones and the sound of music had drowned out the footsteps behind me? Ever since, I haven't walked low-key in that park. I've also made it a habit of mine to walk him in livelier streets at night. If I could give anyone a piece of advice, even if you live in a relatively safe town, do not ever let your guard down. You never know what kind of person might be lurking in the shadows. Hell, this is Bad Vibes. Today's video was on those late night walks. Whether you're walking your dog, walking home from work, or you're just strolling around, killing some time, as you can't sleep. Anyway, Please hit that like button if you enjoy and sit back and relax. I'm female and was 16 or 17 at the time. I used to have terrible insomnia, so to pass time, I would go for walks around my neighborhood really early in the morning. It was one of those mornings and I was just out for a walk when I heard a car approaching me. Mind you, I live in a nicer middle class neighborhood that's a bit more secluded so people don't usually drive through there at night, so it was a little concerning. I turn around and there's a big white van driving hella slow, about 20 feet behind me. Instead of continuing my walk, I stopped and waited to see what they were up to. 
It seems kind of stupid, but there's no way I'm turning my back to a vehicle at 2 a.m. just to be snatched and killed. The van then stops. Two dark figures get out and start walking towards me. I'm like, oh shit, and start to run. It might have been an overreaction, but I had this terrible feeling in my gut. I run towards my house, hiding behind bushes. I didn't see the van until I turned the corner. They park near a patch of houses and about five of them get out of the van with flashlights looking around for something. They all had dark clothing on and weren't saying a word. One of the house's porch light turns on and they run back to their van and hightail it out of there. It was pretty wild and maybe I overreacted. I don't know, you tell me. I'm female. This story takes place when I was 14. I'm 23 now. It was late summer and I was coming home after hanging out at the beach for my best friend Maya's 17th birthday party. When I got off the subway at my stop, I looked at the bus arrival screen. The bus I would normally take home was arriving in an hour. Being a tired 14 year old girl, I decided to take an alternate bus route home. This decision I would later regret. When I get off the bus at the stop, I have about a 10 minute walk to my building. My area at night is pretty quiet, not many cars on the streets. As I'm walking up the street, I hear the sound of an engine nearby. I look over my left shoulder and see a white panel van, I know, how typical, and it's rolling up the street. I try to think nothing of it. But when I turned onto my street, the van does too. Now I'm unsettled and start walking faster. This van is driving slowly and it never passes me. When I turned up the driveway to my building, the van once again turns. Now I'm scared. The driveway to my building has an ice rink on one side of it with bright lights. So I walk beside the rink under the bright lights. There are small townhouses on the other side of the driveway. The van catches up to me and stops. I think maybe this person is lost and trying to ask for directions, trying to find any way to rationalize this. I stop. I stay about four feet away from the van just in case. I look in the van window to see an older man starting to bald with black hair and a white t-shirt. I asked if he's lost and he doesn't respond. Instead, he tries to get me into the van. I say no and start walking, but the van continues to drive slowly, following me. A red car begins to drive down the driveway, and the van drives all the way to the end of the driveway and waits for the red car to turn out before reversing to be beside me again. The man is still trying to get me into the van. I want to make a mad dash to my building, but I'm worried that he would see where I live, so I keep walking. Another car comes down the driveway and the van does the same thing it did before, drives to the end and waits for the car to leave. But this time there's a cab dropping off someone at the townhouses. The cabbie is closing his trunk when he sees me. Are you okay? I tell him that this van has been following me and every time a car comes, the van drives to the end and waits for it to leave before following me again. The cabbie tells me to get in his car, drives to the end of the driveway, and sits there for a bit, so I have enough time to run to my building. I tell him thank you. The van is back in line with me again, so the cabbie gets into his cab and drives up the driveway, and the van follows. I look and see the two vehicles sitting there. I run up the rest of the driveway into my building lobby, my heart racing. When I get to my apartment, I'm still freaked out. I go into my room and call the cops. While on the phone with the cops, I look out my bedroom window and see the van. It's slowly driving around my building looking for me. Now I'm fully panicking. The cops send officers to sweep the area, but they don't find him. Two officers came to my apartment to get a statement from me. About a week after this happened, the officers came back to my apartment. They showed me a photo of the man from the van that they were able to get from the security camera on the side of my building. I told them that the man in the photo was the one that followed me. They told me they found him and that he was being put on the sex offender list. 
So to the man in the white panel van, let's not meet. I was walking my dog around 11.30 p.m. on a street that had no houses on it, only industrial sheds and the woods on one side and the railroad tracks on the other side where the train goes by every few hours. This street is only the next street over from where the residential neighborhood block where I live and I walk my dog here several times a day and usually one final walk around this time. It's a nice street to walk my dog on because the woods make it seem more like a nature walk rather than walking down the street full of houses. I like that I could see the stars better on this road because there are no street lights. I like seeing wildlife occasionally. Several young raccoons run up the trees when me and my dog go by. A feral cat eyes shine in the dark as it hunches in the distance. An owl hoots. As I am walking my dog on this night, I see headlights of an approaching vehicle. It's not unusual as vehicles use the street as a throughway throughout the day, especially after the city made a park at the end of the street where the road goes around a bend. There is hardly any traffic at this hour though. Sometimes the local police patrol through, other times it could be sketchy people. During the day, I find empty beer bottles and cans and teeny liquor bottles that were tossed out of vehicles. Periodically, I carry a small trash bag and pick up the litter to keep my nature walk pleasant. As the vehicle gets closer, I keep checking the headlights as I'm standing on the side of the road, letting my dog sniff around. I check every now and then to make sure the driver is staying on their side of the road and not driving erratically, under the influence of driving while texting because I don't want to be hit. I keep my cell phone flashlight shined on my dog, who is off the road, on the grass, sniffing on the ground, so the driver knows that I'm there and keeps on their side of the road. I'm standing on my side of the road, facing my dog, and I take one last look over my shoulder at the vehicle as it approaches closer to where I am. Then I look back at my dog, so I'm not rudely staring at them. As the vehicle passes behind me, I hear it slowing down, so I turn to face it, and it stops a little past where I'm standing. I hold my phone's flashlight so it shines on the car and the driver. It's a man, young looking, maybe still in high school, but probably in his early 20s. He has a round face with what looks like short whiskers all around the bottom half of his face. It's more than just stubble, I think. I wait to see what he's up to. I say nothing, just shine the light on him. I like your dog. Thank you, I say politely, with emphasis on the first word. It's my standard response for when people say, I like your dog. It's usually kids that ride their bicycles or skateboards during the day, on the way to the skate park at the end of the road, now closed, and a few other women who have stopped in their cars, their husbands driving them, also during the day. My dog is a great Pyrenees. A large breed dog that is big and fluffy looking and people often comment that she looks like a polar bear. She doesn't, but that's what they say. So it's not super unusual for someone to stop their car and ask me what kind of breed my dog is or say that they like it. But it feels very weird at 11.30pm on a dark, desolate road with no houses, no people around, except for a guy that thinks it's okay to stop and, after a pause, he says, you're welcome, politely, with an emphasis on the second word, in a tone that I thought almost seemed surprised that I said thank you, or perhaps he was simply mirroring my response. I say nothing else, just wait, still shining the flashlight on my phone in his direction, waiting for him to leave. It feels very inappropriate for someone to stop their car late at night on a desolate street to talk to a person who is walking their dog, especially a woman who is alone. Maybe he just doesn't realize this. He might not have a lot of social skills or social intelligence. He looked like he might be a little awkward. After a few seconds that seem long, he drives away, slowly at first, then picks up speed. When the car is a little distance away, I hear someone scream out of the vehicle, You're a fucking bitch! Then further away, as the car rounds the turn at the end of the street, I hear another scream from the vehicle. You're a fucking see you next Tuesday, just to clean it up a bit. 
I was standing there thinking, what the fuck? At first, I think there might have been someone else, another guy, in the car that was the screamer. But then, I think it could have been him. This gives me pause, and I'm making sure to carry pepper spray, and might just hide in the woods until cars pass by in the dark after this. There are too many weirdos in this world, and psychopaths. I just got home and I'm shaking. I had a friend over for a few glasses of wine. I had just drank one but she had drank more so I decided to walk her home to make sure she got there safe. She lives about 10 minutes away from me so I thought it wasn't a big deal but when I was walking back a car literally stopped in the street next to me. It was full of boys and they were asking me where I was going and what I'm doing. I didn't respond and kept walking and they eventually drove off so I thought I was safe. Then I saw the car stop near my block and they saw me coming and were waiting for me to pass by them again. One of them kept asking me why I wouldn't talk to them and that I should go with them, all while driving slow next to me. I was on my phone with my boyfriend. They again left and I went inside. It was frightening. I have been reflecting today on several unsettling encounters I've had while walking around my neighborhood in the past year. I realized none of them are quite as creepy as most other stories on here, but I figured I'd share it anyway. The first was a very, very large man whose face I could not make out, but I definitely didn't know, who growled, fuck you, at me across the street late at night. Then there was a guy around my own age, 25, who followed me down the street in his car because he wouldn't believe that I wasn't Dan, a kid who apparently snuck out of his house a few blocks away. Granted, I look kind of young, but I'm still an adult male and clearly not a kid. And the creepiest to me was the time that a wall of bushes I was walking past started rustling. A guy popped out, stared at me, said sorry, then slowly sauntered away down the middle of the street. Good times. Let me start by saying that I'm a college student, 21, male, and I live with my girlfriend of two years, 21 female. We recently got a six month old golden retriever about three weeks ago. I typically take him out for his last walk at midnight. Most nights, my girlfriend would come with me because I live in the city and there's quite a bit of crime around our area. This encounter happened maybe an hour ago. Tonight, my girlfriend was busy with homework, so she didn't come with me on my last walk. Everything was normal for the majority of the walk, up until I was about to enter my apartment. I live in an apartment complex with pretty poor security, so I see random people in our building quite a bit. I live on the back corner on my floor, so there's a hallway intersection right before my door. It's a giant square. As I'm walking up to my door, my dog started to fight with me as he does quite a bit. I put my hand up to indicate my dog to drop the leash and he slowly does. I start heading for my door again when I realize there's a man standing right behind me watching the entirety of this 30 to 45 second long situation. Now keep in mind, it isn't weird for people to be wandering the halls around 12.30 a.m. but most people are on their phones or taking out the trash or playing pool in the lobby. This man was carrying nothing and had his arms crossed behind his back. He kept his arms like this the entire time I saw him. After noticing this man who was literally nine or 10 inches away from me, my body froze. I looked up at him as he was a little taller than me. His face had an expression of judgment, almost like he was waiting to see if I was gonna hit my dog. My body had chills from head to toe when I met this man's face. He just looked off. The way he moved reminded me of an old man, arms crossed behind his back, and he walked extremely slow down the hall after I had went for my door again. I honestly panicked and just went for my door stumbling for my key. I didn't say anything because I was in shock that someone could have snuck up on me and my dog without making any sort of noise. My dog loves strangers and tries to jump on everyone, 
but my dog didn't do anything but stare this man down. I would also like to note that it was strange that my dog hadn't noticed the man until I had fully realized myself. There's a lot of logical reasons as to how or why this encounter happened. Maybe he was just awkward, very introverted. I am a frequent reader of this subreddit and have posted my creepy encounters as well. But there was one story I was reading on here that definitely made me want to share. This story happened when I was 18 or 19. I am female and I looked very young and was only like 100 pounds. I was living on a military base. I walked my dog a lot on base. For a little background, my dog is a chocolate lab mixed dog. He is very well behaved and is very attached to me. He loves meeting people, especially children. He loves their attention and giving them kisses. One day we were walking enjoying the nice breeze and this man came up to me. I still have no idea where he came from. That's how bad I was shocked. He asked me, what kind of dog is that? He is also smiling real big. At first I wasn't taken aback because a lot of people asked me what kind of breed he is as he had a unique look. I answered him saying he's a Labrador mix and my family adopted him. While I was telling him this, his eyes locked on me, still smiling. He suddenly got way too close to me and I backed up. My dog must have felt my uneasiness and he growled so loud and bit the guy's hand. The guy ran away from us and I never saw him again. I literally ran home with my dog after that. If you guys are wondering if I told my parents about this incident, no I didn't. I was honestly afraid that I would get in trouble for not controlling my dog. If you know how military bases are, they are super strict when it comes to dogs. Certain breeds are banned from the bases. I thought that my dog would have to be put down. I eventually told my parents years later about the incident and they are very concerned. Now I'm 24 years old and looking back, I definitely should have told my parents when I got home. I'm so thankful that my dog saved me from someone that was possibly super dangerous. And yes, my dog is still alive to this day and never leaves my side. He truly saved me and I'm super thankful. This happened back in early 2015. I was then a 19 year old guy living in a rather bad area of Portland, Oregon. Even though there were occasionally some belligerent homeless people and drug addicts, violent muggers were very rare and most of the city felt very safe even at night. One of my best friends turned 21 and we decided to go bar hopping and then go clubbing. I was in a group of about a dozen people and three of which were my roommates. Unfortunately for me, I was the only one in the group who was either under the legal drinking age or didn't have a fake ID. This meant I was unable to enter the bar. However, to my luck, there's a very nice Mediterranean restaurant right across the street from the bar, which I ended up going to. I stayed there for more than an hour and then I was ready to leave. I've done that walk many times, even at night, so I was never scared. Until this night, of course. From my apartments, my roommates and I took an Uber to the bar. This meant I would have to walk back since I didn't have Uber on my phone, and my battery was running low. The distance back to my apartment was about 3 miles. The time was already close to midnight, and I would be reaching my apartment around 1am. I decided to walk the distance anyway since I haven't been to the gym and thought it would be good exercise. I began my walk and passed by a lot of drunks. Even though some of the drunks would shout things at me, I never felt threatened by any of them, so I was okay. However, the last mile to my apartment was through a darkly lit park that can be scary at night. Not because of crime, but because there is only one street light in that stretch of road. I reached a somewhat creepy area around 12.30. As I descended down the dark narrow street, I noticed a black Chevy Silverado speed past me and slow down once he passes me. The truck almost comes to a stop but then decides to drive ahead. I begin to shrug it off at first, however, this is where it starts to get creepy. 
After I walk nearly a quarter mile forward, the Chevy Silverado comes down the opposite direction and does the same thing. When the truck slows down, it almost comes to a halt. I begin to panic, but am not openly showing it. I pretend to ignore the vehicle, but my instincts tell me that something is not right. The truck then starts to proceed, but this time, I cannot keep calm. I was in the middle of the dark, isolated park with no streetlights, and there was not a single person in sight. After I walk about 500 more feet, I begin to look in horror as the fucking pickup truck comes flying towards me and suddenly puts on the brake about 100 feet behind me. One man, around twice my age and bald, opens the passenger door and comes out of the truck, carrying what looked like a hockey stick. I look behind and lock eyes with him. He gives me the most haunting and sinister look I've ever seen from a real person. He begins to yell, Get the fuck out of my sight, or I'll fuck you up, mud slime. I'm from Indian origin, and I have brown skin, and mud slime was a racial slur directed towards Muslims. As I was planning my escape, I remembered how there was a wooded area between the park and my apartment. Where I was, I could cut through the park and go through some woods, then right across the woods was my apartment. This was smart because I have taken that shortcut during the day and the truck would not be able to cut through the woods. I just ran towards those woods and heard another yelling in the distance, Fuck off, asshole! yelled another large man walking in the opposite direction of the sidewalk I was. I see another large man walking a German Shepherd towards me. After that, the truck driver started running at us with a hockey stick and I made a run for it. I dart towards the woods. Fortunately, the truck driver decides not to chase me and gets back in his truck. I reach my apartment five minutes later. In the parking lot of my apartment, I see the guy that was walking his dog. He looked like a roughed up bodybuilder, so I was a little afraid of him too. However, we had a pleasant conversation. I began to head up to my apartments and look out my apartment window. To my disgust and horror, I see the black Chevy Silverado drive by my apartment and then leave. My friends came back home close to 3 in the morning, just after I went to bed for the night. Thankfully, I never saw that creep again and moved out of those apartments a few months later. After this incident, I avoided walking alone in dark spots and isolated areas at night. To the stalker driver in the black pickup truck, let's not meet. I live in a big city, and after being here for five years and taking plenty of walks around my neighborhood, I never had any issues with crime or foul play. It helps that I'm a guy in his 30s standing six feet tall. My favorite time to go for walks was late at night when everything is quiet and still. As a horror and true crime fan, the slightly creepy atmosphere adds to the element of excitement, and I just find walking alone at night a way to clear my head and get some exercise. The surrounding neighborhoods have an old brick road and the main streets are well lit. It's easy to find very dark, shadowy streets to wander down. A couple nights ago, I found myself on such road while heading back home after a long late night walk. I was walking along when I heard a car approaching me from behind. In many cases, the car would just go by and I would think nothing of it. But this car with darkly tinted windows didn't go by. It pulled over onto the curb and completely stopped about 15 yards ahead of me. I looked around and realized that there was no logical reason for the car to pull over in that manner. The only house in sight was across the street. Literally no one else was around. No more cars, nothing. My intuition was screaming at me that this car was a danger to me. I slowed down my approach, but nothing happened. No one got out of the car or rolled down the window. It was like they were waiting for me to get closer. Not wanting to take any chances, I decided to do a 180 and walk back in the direction I came from. It was only a short distance to the main, well-lit road, so I walked quickly towards it, never looking back at the car. I went down the block and turned off onto another dark road in hopes of evading the car in case they turned around to follow me. I was in unfamiliar territory now but began to walk in the direction of my house, which was a half mile away. 
I made a few more turns just in case and kept my eyes out for that white car with tinted windows, but luckily didn't have another encounter. I made it home safely, mind racing, as I considered the worst case scenarios of what the unknown person or group's intentions were. Would they have mugged me and robbed me for my house key and pocket knife? What if someone had stepped out with a gun and forced me into the car? I had trouble sleeping that night, and waking up the next morning with my life safely intact was truly a beautiful feeling. So this happened a couple hours ago. I'm a 19 year old female. I was clubbing with my friends, and around 1.40 in the morning, I told them I was going to head home. Not a long walk, 5 minutes at most. As I got to the corner of the block that my hostel was on, a man in the back seat of a white car tapped on the window. I turned around to look and they were all saying things like, Hey, come here. I turned back around and continued walking, a little scared. Then I heard the car door open and I see a big old man, maybe in his 30s, get out and walk towards me, saying, come back here, repeatedly. I turned back and tried to walk fast towards the hostel, which was about 200 meters from where I was. He kept walking towards me and got faster and faster, but never more than a brisk walk. At this point, I was shitting bricks, and the only thing I could think of was how I was going to be a topic on one of those crime podcasts. I'm going to be one of those girls that gets kidnapped a mere minutes from her home. He continued for another 10 seconds. Meanwhile, I was trying to think of something I could use as a weapon. I had nothing on me except what was in my pockets, ID and money. I turned around and he wasn't there anymore. Scared that he had gone back to the car to drive around and grab me, I ran to my hostel, right to my boyfriend. I can't stop thinking about what they wanted from me. Sorry if this is too mild for the sub. I just kind of wanted to see if anyone had any idea if this sort of stuff happens all the time and what they might have wanted from me. This story is fresh, as it just happened a few minutes ago, but I will try my best to give you all the details. So, I'm a Pokemon Go player. I was a mild fan of the franchise as a kid, and now, in my mid-twenties, I find it allows me to get out of the house more often, and do stuff that doesn't involve, well, my house. If you have played the game, you know there's these places called gymnasiums, where you can place one of your Pokemons to earn you a max of 50 in-game coin per 24 hours. It's quite the popular feature in the game. However, since I live in a huge European city, there are many, many players to compete with in order to secure a spot at these gyms. The reason why I'm telling you all this is to let you know why in the world I would brave the cold winter of my metropolitan city at 3am. You see, it's not just that I'm stupid, it's also because I know most people are asleep, which in turn allows me to quickly defeat all the Pokemons in the gym and place my own. I've been doing this for a few months, and I've been quite successful. So tonight, the routine was the same. Got dressed, got my coat, my scarf, and my black leather gloves. I went out and made my way to the first of three gyms in my area that I usually conquer in the game. It's actually quite fascinating to observe people that wander the city at these hours. Well tonight, I was going to meet a special guy. I arrived at the first gym, which was a small street that curves to the right for quite a stretch. I empty it and place my own Pokemon aside. Afterwards, I linger around the area, taking off the gloves to scratch my head, but overall just managing the game and looking things up. Some cars go by, and that's when I see him. This guy, clearly over six foot, making his way down the street. Now, these are just my country standards, but everything about him screamed, thug, ready to knife you, sporting a black cap at night, concealing his face with a shadow, padded black jacket with dirty blue jeans and rip off Timberland boots. My immediate reaction was to keep it cool and natural and just calmly place my cell phone back into my pocket. As he went past me, he gives me this, what the fuck are you looking at, kind of look. I couldn't help but give him a small sideways glance as I put my glove back on my hand. I started walking to the next gym, which happened to be in the same direction he was walking towards, and he, to my surprise, started speeding up. Then he pulled out his cell phone and tried to phone someone. This immediately reminded me of my girlfriend. 
as it was a common tactic she uses when she feels like she's being followed by strangers. Whoever he tried to phone, however, did not pick up. He looks back at me, keeps walking, increasingly faster. He switched sides and starts walking in the middle of the road, effectively distancing himself further and allowing the parked cars to get between me and him. And then, abruptly, he stops. He turns around and asks, Hey friend, you know how I can find transportation at this hour? I'm awkwarded out and freaking out at the same time. So without even looking at him, I just said, At this hour? Only Uber. He starts walking, only when I pass him. Then it hit me, from my perspective, he was a thug looking dude that could have very well tried to rob me and potentially harm me. But from his perspective, I'm a 6 foot dude in his mid 20s that for some reason decided to pocket his phone the moment he walked past me. Then gave him a sideways, what the fuck are you looking at, glance as he passed as I put on black leather gloves and started following him, with not a single person awake around, looking like a hitman or serial killer. As anxious as I was, he must have been terrified enough to try to phone someone, or pretend to, and then initiate dialogue with a total stranger at 3am, just to be sure that I wasn't a psycho about to knife him. We walked together in the same direction for almost 10 minutes after that, without looking or talking to one another. Just two awkward guys who did not want to meet. Just two awkward guys that did not want to meet each other ever again. This happened a few hours ago during my night shift and for some reason was so disturbing to me. I'm a police officer in a big city, so I've had to deal with some pretty awful sights and smells while doing this job, usually on a daily basis. This, however, was something even more unusual. There is a large homeless population in the city, with mental health and substance abuse being a common issue among this population. It isn't uncommon to see a homeless person suffering from mental illness acting strange late at night, and if they aren't hurting themselves or anyone else, that's fine with me. It's around 11 p.m. and I'm stopped at a red light on a very quiet and dark road. I'm the only car on the road. I look to my right, just observing the street, and see a skinny man in ragged clothing on the sidewalk. His feet were planted on the ground, belly arched towards the sky, and their hands planted on the ground over their head. I thought, huh, interesting. While holding this position, the person snaps her head towards me, then looks towards the sky and proceeds to do the fucking exorcist spider walk up the street at a speed which seemed like this was the only way they walked. I merely thought, what the fuck, as this man navigated the sidewalk in horror movie fashion. I have no idea why that style of walking is so disturbing, but Jesus Christ did it bring back childhood memories of the exorcist movie scaring the shit out of me. My partner and I are trying to do an all-nighter to prepare him for his night shift tomorrow. He does the odd shifts here and there with a temp agency as he is a student. We thought it would be a good idea to walk to the corner store at midnight to keep us awake. And I had a small parcel I could post in the post box while we were at it. The corner store with the said post box is around a 5 minute walk from my home. It's a super quick walk and our neighborhood is pretty safe. We leave the house, telling his sister whom we live with that we're going to pop out. Everything was fine. I hold the package in my hand and we walk to the shop. We're crossing the road when we see that in the parking spaces outside, there is a van between two cars with its lights on. And when getting closer, there are two adults inside. We walk past the front windshield and when getting out of the line of sight, we hear the van door open and a man shout, Excuse me, you dropped something. The tone was off and I just got bad vibes. My partner and I looked behind us and the door slammed, but our view of the van was obstructed by another car. I couldn't tell if the person had sat back in the car or was outside the door. My partner went to walk and check, but I couldn't see anything on the floor from where we stood, so I stopped him. I put my package in the post box and we crossed from the box instead of walking back past that windshield again. When I crossed the road, my partner said he saw a male standing outside of the van and walking in front. 
We got really bad vibes from this and tried to tell ourselves that he was just looking to see if we in fact dropped something. But we had only left the house with my package and my phone. Nothing else. We didn't drop anything. When I crossed the road and almost on our street, we saw the van pull out of the parking space and speed up the road towards us. I immediately called his sister and made it clear that I was on the phone while rushing back to our house. They sped up the road past us, going way over the speed limit. Although we didn't share a conversation, we both got the worst vibes from this encounter. I'm confident I didn't drop anything and that they were waiting by the van door for us to turn back and get closer. I just feel shaken up to be honest. When I was five, I would walk to the school bus every morning. One morning, two men in a car drove up to me asking, have you seen our dog? Obviously, they didn't have a dog, but me being an idiot, I say, well, what's the breed? Husky. Oh, I haven't. Why don't you come with us to find the puppy? I was about to get into the car. The guy had a hand on my arm to help me in when I saw my bus, which came super early. I told them I had to go to the bus and ran to the bus before it left. About a week later, two young girls were found in a field, sexually assaulted and beaten with a large object. One dead, but the other one survived telling the cops she was asked to find a husky. To this day, I think if the bus didn't come as early as it did, I would be dead or worse. The following happened last summer, and I haven't told anyone about it yet for some reason. But anyway, I was taking late night walks, especially during the summer. And one night, I was taking an unusual route, which I'd regret later. It was about 11 p.m., and the sun had already gone down, but it wasn't completely dark yet. The road I was walking was quite long, and at the end of it, I could see someone walking towards me. I didn't think much of it. When he was about 90 feet away from me, he starts to run. He just looked like he was jogging, and I thought that's what he was doing, so I didn't really react to it. As he got closer, I saw that he was holding something in his hand, and now I started to suspect something, but I just thought it was my imagination running wild again, so I continued to walk. When he was finally about to run past me, he suddenly stopped for a few seconds. I could see that he was staring at me. He walked up to me and said something that will haunt me forever. Why didn't you run? I could have killed you. You should run the next time. As he was standing there next to me, I could see the object he was holding was a stick taser, like the ones that the guards use. I still wonder what would happen if I had trusted my instincts and started to run. About a couple years ago, I took my dog on a walk on a regular route. She's quite small, a chihuahua mix who loves people. To get to an actual hiking area, we needed to go through a walking path beside the golf course. There's normally a ton of people walking their dogs, but there were only a couple of them out that day. There are some trees and shrubs along the way and a section that is completely blocked off from view in the middle. My dog and I are walking through this part when she starts growling, she immediately stops and begins to snarl. An old, disheveled woman holding something behind her back emerged from behind the trees and had a grin on her face, reaching one hand out and trying to pet my dog. My dog takes one look at her and starts barking and snarling. She had never been very protective before, so I just stood there in shock. She kept mumbling, touch, touch, so I nervously just backed off and practically sprinted back. A person who had encountered her before me, who had taken another route back, saw me upset and nervous as well. He asked me if I encountered her too. I said yes, and he told me that she was potentially dangerous and that he didn't know what she was holding behind her back. Safe to say, I avoid going there under any circumstances. Earlier tonight, my girlfriend and I decided to go to a local scenic location where people used to hang out called Pot Rocks in Central Maryland. However, it was late and the parking lot was currently closed, so we decided to cut through the woods using the trail my friends found when we were younger. 
Going back at least seven years later, it was much more overgrown and the tree stand that was once functional was completely destroyed. As we were making our way through, I started feeling increasingly uneasy. Neither of us are really fearful of being in the woods at night. In fact, we do it all the time, but something felt different. I started to joke around about how there was a creepy vibe, and we both laughed it off. About 100 yards later, as we were walking, we heard something large and quiet moving fast behind us, maybe 35 yards back. We stopped and both pointed our lights towards the direction, but couldn't see anything. We kept walking, but I could tell neither of us wanted to continue. We decided to turn around, and as we were walking back, we saw a set of eyes that was so frightening that both of us said nothing and hustled forward from where we came from. Once we made it back to the car, we both were sure that what we heard was not a deer, and neither were the eyes. We also both felt like we were being observed. She also had another strange encounter in those woods, not far from where we were, where someone was throwing rocks at them. We both agreed that there's something not right about the area, and don't intend on going back at night. About two years ago, me and my then girlfriend Emily would go out for walks. She would do this in her hometown as it was safer than mine and she had not long been living with me and my parents in my, let's say, not so safe town in the middle of the country. So that evening came and I had just got home from a stressful shift when Em said to me, can we go out for a walk? I asked why and she responded with, well, I kind of want to go to Tesco because it would be nice to get some fresh air. I reluctantly agreed. Maybe the walk will help me de-stress. And with the summer nights having a nice breeze, it can't be that bad. At least, I thought anyways. We head out, saying goodbye to my mom and her giving us the usual talk. Be safe. Be quiet when you come in because we'll be asleep. And being a teenager, I replied, my typical, yeah, sure, mom. We left Tesco, but Emily needed to be out and hadn't been satisfied and she asked, Is there anywhere around that's kind of quiet, like a park or field? I stood there drinking my water, trying to decide where we can go. Uh, there's a field next to the lake. We can go there. And off we went, arriving to the fence that connects to a path leading to a wooded area, but also an open area. I forgot that it would be so dark here. But as luck would have it, I had my dad's heavy duty flashlight, like the ones police use. Emily had her phone flashlight to help her see. We walked down the now lit path, coming to a bench under a tree. My ankle, that I broke a few years prior, was in excruciating pain, so we sat down for a few minutes. Emily cuddled up next to me and started to kiss my neck, which led to making out, etc. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed a flashlight, but I ignored it, and we continued. Then it happened again. I got up, now anxious and curious about the flashes, and suddenly a cyclist rode past us with his lights flashing, which spooked us. We chuckled and kept walking around to find another bench, as we felt our privacy had been ruined a little bit. Now sitting in a more lit area next to the street lamp, we decided to sit close and chat, and we did this for about 10 minutes when we heard like a twig snap under a heavy foot. Already being on edge from the flashes earlier, I decided to check it out, telling my girlfriend to wait there, and left her with a flashlight for some comfort. Big mistake on my part. I neared the edge of the hedge when I saw a man's foot slightly around the corner and his phone in hand. Flash. Shit. I muttered under my breath, realizing we were being stalked. He stepped out towards me, his face covered. I was only able to make out that he was wearing a colored jacket with a black band around his arm and almost looked like tape and his brown scuffed up Timberland boots. I freaked, turned to my girlfriend and told her to get up and run. With no hesitation, she took off towards the houses at the edge of the field, dropping my dad's light. I ran, picked up the light and turned to see the guy a little less than arm's reach from me. I'm not a small guy, tall stocky, but he was bigger and trying to fight him I'd likely lose. So I decided to run. I finally caught up to her and by the time I did the guy was long gone. Tears streamed down Emily's face as we continued to walk home looking over her shoulder all the time. 
After explaining to my mom what happened and deciding no more late walks, she suggested ringing the police, but we decided against it as I didn't even see his face. About a month later, I was walking home with a friend that I had made at college and we were going through the same field. We happened to notice a tent on our path, being nosy I looked to see the jacket with a black band and worn Timberland boots. Before I begin, I feel it's important to know that I'm female, about 5'3", somewhat thin, and not a very intimidating looking person. This happened to me back in the summer of 2014. I was walking home from my friend's house on a kind of a cool night. My friend lives a little further than a mile away from me, so it's a bit of a longer walk. To give you some idea of what my route looks like, I have to go on a half block of creepy back roads turn onto a barely lit main road, cross the main highway, and go down the creepier non-lit back road to get to my house. There is this little hill I have to go down that passes our little local ice cream shop and a trucking dispatcher. I was passing the ice cream shop when I stopped after clearly hearing what sounded like a gunshot. At first, I thought it was a hunter since hunting was very popular in our town. But after I thought about it, it dawned on me that no one would be hunting at 10 at night and in city limits. The next thing that happened only confirmed to me that it wasn't a hunter. He's dead! In the most horrific sounding scream, I heard what sounded like a man panicking about a few blocks behind me. I presumed that he did it and it was an accident, but I'm not willing to find out. I was panicking a bit and started to speed walk since all I had to do was cross the highway. Something I should add, before I came close to the highway, I had to make sure it was clear from both sides. Anyways, I turned around to see a man standing about maybe a block or so away, just facing my direction. It was difficult to make out any facial features, since the lighting was shit. Something must have clicked in his brain because no sooner than I saw him, he started to speed walk towards me. Now, the thought of me being a 14 year old girl in the middle of the night with some potential crackhead rapist in front of me scared me shitless. I said to myself, fuck this shit, I'm out, and darted straight up the incline through the intersection of the highway, not looking back. I bolted down the hill of my creepy back road and ran straight into my house, just barely able to breathe. My mom was very confused and very creeped out when I had told her about my experience. It makes me thankful that my back roads aren't lit. I believe this man was trying to follow me, but stopped because he couldn't see me. I still go to my friend's house at that same route, but never alone at night. If I have to, I always make sure I'm biking. After that night, I never walk anywhere in the town at night. I always bike. I'm still a little freaked out. I just got back from a walk with my dog. I went the usual way I go and left around 4.40ish. Since it's midwinter right now, it usually gets dark around 5.30, so I try to speed walk. My walks usually take me around 30 to 40 minutes, but when I'm with my extremely stubborn dog, it takes around 50 minutes. I read a lot of scary stories and listen to all sorts of scary stories about people getting stalked, murdered, etc. And being only a 4'10 teenage female, I'm always slightly paranoid. There's a small hill with two paths, one leading to the neighborhood, right, and the other one to a park, left. I was walking up the path about to turn through the neighborhood when I got a sudden urge to turn around. I saw an older man wearing a puffy blue jacket. He was walking alone. I continued, thinking nothing of it but I sped up a little because I always got nervous when people walked behind me. Stupid, I know. The path to the neighborhood first goes right, then into a long narrow path, and the end has an opening leading to the neighborhood. I've always hated that part. It's always empty and dark and resembles a shady alleyway. It even has a large wooded area on one side. While I was walking through, I sped up some more and turned a few more times. I assumed he went the other way to the park and continued walking. The neighborhood is a long road with houses on both sides. I felt a lot safer now that I was in the open area. Walking down the hill I turned around a few more times to make sure I had lost him and he wasn't there. 
I got to the bottom of the hill, where the road splits in two directions. I stopped to let my dog go to the bathroom, then I turned around, before turning left when I saw the man behind me. It happened when I was 12 or 13 years old. We were visiting our ex-neighbors and took our two little dogs with us. Our parents asked my friend and I to take our dogs on a walk. While on our way back to the apartment, we saw a creepy dude walking in our direction. His behavior was so weird, whistling very suspiciously, looking at the sky with a terrifying grin on his face. I knew it was bad the second our dogs were growling and barking at him. Way before he got near us, they never do this. They are so nice and sweet that I would expect them to greet a thief breaking into our home. We naturally ran away and got back home quickly. Turns out this guy was known in our neighborhood for being a pedophile and had several other mental issues. When I was little, I begged my parents to get a dog every chance I got. For my 12th birthday, they finally said yes, and we got our first puppy. About a year later, I was taking him for a walk. It wasn't late, but the sun was setting, so we just went around the block. One of my neighbors, other side of the block, so we didn't know them, were having a party, and him and some other men were in the garage drinking and smoking. I walked past with my dog, He's an old English sheepdog, so he's big and gets a lot of attention when we're walking. The men called my dog over, and I don't think much of it. I let my pup guide me over to the garage. The men pet him, and I start to walk away when one of them grabs my wrist. A couple of them started asking me questions about myself. How old am I? Where am I going? And if I wanted to come inside for some pop so they can hang out with my dog. I rip my hand away and he tries to grab me again and my dog stands between us and starts to bark and growl at the men. As we walk away they start calling for me to come back and laughing. So thankful that my dog noticed something was wrong and got defensive. They moved not too long after that but I never walked that way alone again. So near where I live, but far out in the sticks, there's a glorified gravel path in the woods called Roop Hill. It runs maybe three miles long and only half a mile of it is paved. On the south end is the pavement, but with a few old but otherwise normal houses dotting it, deceptively average at that point. Then the houses end, the pavement ends, and the gravel roads shoot up a steep hill. It's not taken care of at all. The gravel is piled up in potholes and berms, so unless you're driving a nice off-road vehicle, you'd want to take it easy. So since you would need to drive slowly, you'd have a nice clear view of the homemade signs nailed to the trees with messages like, no trespassing, and we're watching you, scrawled in sharpie on them. At the top of the hill, the road winds lazily for a little under a mile before driving back down the other side of the hill. The gravel is an equally crappy condition on that side. After you reach the bottom of the hill, the road cuts straightish for about a mile through cornfields before intersecting with another road. The reason why I'm so familiar with this layout is that I've often taken friends on late night drives to this road to scare the crap out of them. Never an elaborate prank, I just drive slowly and play this creepy music to get them amped up and paranoid. I always made sure to talk about the meth heads and their labs out there too, and how sheriffs try to avoid going there because it is dangerous. I figured it was bullshit, just stories, but I think now there's an element of truth to some of the rumors. I was with my friend Aaron one night, 
and we decided to go on a late night drive to Roop Hill to freak ourselves out. So we took off, drove down the various country highways and the back roads and turned onto it. I made sure to play extra creepy music since me and Aaron had made this trip before. It honestly lost its creepy luster on me by then, but I still enjoyed the long drives and scaring my friends. Of course, it mostly went uneventful and we were almost across the hill about to descend the other side when Aaron freaked out. I checked my mirrors to see what he was shitting a fit over and saw truck lights down the road. They seemed to be back where the road first topped the hill. The truck made it under the street light on top of the hill, a really dim orange light. I could see that it was kicking up tons of dirt. It was speeding towards us. I paused the music and sure enough, with the windows down, I could hear the gravel crunching and flying like the vehicle was speeding. Keep in mind, I had driven this road dozens of times, both during the day and at night, and I had never encountered another vehicle. So having a truck speeding to seemingly catch up to us at midnight on a road with rumored meth heads was pretty jarring. Usually, I didn't relinquish my brakes driving down that hill but this time, I didn't even touch them. So the next day, I'm hanging out with my other friend, Chris. Chris and I are both lounging around, playing video games, talking about quantum physics, Chris's favorite thing, and Chipotle, my favorite thing. I, of course, told him about Aaron and I getting chased the previous night, and I kind of hammed it up, made it come across a little bit more harrowing than it really was. But now, Chris wanted to go to the road, so we waited until late at night, around 2 in the morning probably, and went to Roop Hill. This time, I wasn't playing any music, I wanted to be alert. It was going quite normally, just like usual, when I slammed on my brakes. I threw the car in park and just said, uh, you see that too, right? I looked at Chris, and he was just as confused as me, and just nodded. My headlights were clearly illuminating a thick metal cable stretched across the road. On the right, it was wrapped around a tree at what I guess was roughly a head height for a standing adult. It was pulled taut across the road, anchored to a fence post at roughly chest height. I had no idea what to make of it or how to react when I heard gravel being thrown by tires. I checked my mirrors and sure enough, the truck headlights were tearing us down the road from behind us. I started freaking out, my breathing and heart rate were out of control and I began sweating. Chris just swore under his breath quietly. I threw it in drive, pulled it as far right as I could and my low seating car slid just under the cable with a loud metal on metal scraping noise. I cringed as I heard it scrape but I wasn't about to sit there and get deliverance. So again, I flew down the hill, and this is the creepy cherry on the Sunday for me personally, because Chris didn't see it. As we left the tree line and entered the cornfields, I glanced to my right past Chris and briefly caught a glimpse of somebody standing about three or four feet back in the corn. I just felt my stomach scrunch up, and I floored the accelerator. I glanced at my rearview mirror and I could see a man standing in the road behind us, illuminated by the moon and my taillights. He had a long object slung over his shoulders. I couldn't tell if it was a cane or maybe a rifle, but I didn't want to stay and find out. Before I could even tell Chris about it, we were around the bend and out of sight. I haven't been back to that road since then. Definitely one of my creepiest personal experiences. Update, finally went back recently and the creepy sign that says we're watching you with the creepy frowning face is gone. Still some signs that say no dumping, but the threatening atmosphere has passed. Guess I caught the tail end of the meth rain. A few nights ago this happened to me and I keep thinking about it. Now. I work in the criminal justice field where I see a lot of crime and I'm also naturally a follower of the subreddit, scary movies, and scary stories in general. So I have to disclaim that I do have a hindsighted sense of paranoia sometimes. But my girlfriend and her roommate both agreed that this was weird. 
I was out walking my girlfriend's roommate's dog as she was working a night shift in her neighborhood, which is a very safe suburb of New York. I walked across the parking lot into this field in the middle of a roundabout. I was screwing around on Reddit since it was near midnight and in the middle of quarantine, so there were no cars out. The dog has a long leash, so she's sniffing around, and then I kind of saw her stop and stare towards the road. I looked up and saw a black SUV stopped at the roundabout. I pulled on my COVID mask that was on my chin, as some people in New York are touchy about it, understandably, just in case they stop to lecture me. I looked back at my phone and then back up at the SUV that was still there. There was a family, mother, father in the front and a 12 or so year old daughter in the back. I was a bit startled because they were just blankly staring directly at me. I sort of waved and nodded and started walking the dog a bit around the grass again. They started to slowly move. They came around the roundabout and I looked back and all of them were again staring directly at me. I figured they may talk to me so I stopped and waited for them to get around the circle. But when they approached they kept driving very slowly all still staring directly at me. I gave them another half wave and they drove past me back around the circle then again around the circle literally all of them blankly staring at me even the little girl in the back seat. I put my arms up in like a shrugging gesture as if to say what the fuck. They did this a couple more times so I started walking to the edge of the circle to engage. Normally something I would not do, but it was a family, so I sort of felt a bit more brave to do so. They sped up a bit and went around the corner and turned off the roundabout. I started to feel even weirder, so I decided to walk back to her apartment building when they entered the roundabout again. I was watching them out of the corner of my eye, and they were still staring. I started picking up the pace, and they turned off the roundabout towards me and I picked up the pace even more as they followed me. Once I got to the sidewalk, I turned around because I didn't want them to know which door I was walking into. They stopped about 30 feet behind me and they were staring from the front window. The little girl was in the center seat now, staring too. I once again raised my arms to be like, can I help you? No response at all from them. I kind of stood there and with no movement, I took out my phone and typed a license plate into the note app. Then they slowly turned to the other side of the parking lot, all still staring. Until they got to the end of the lot, I rushed into the apartment building, which luckily needed a code to enter. I got up there and told my girlfriend and then her roommate later that morning. They were both kind of freaked out. I watched them out her window and they pulled back up to where I was standing on the sidewalk and just sat there in their car. I couldn't see them at this point, only the roof of their car. It felt like 10 minutes and then they slowly drove away. I can't stop thinking about their creepy ass blank stare at me. Somehow it made it creepier that it was a normal looking family with a younger daughter. If it was like two younger guys, I could have marked it off as them being bored and screwing with me, but this was just blank, unmoving expressions that made it feel so eerie. I'm a guy. This was probably 9 or 10 years ago. I was in my mid-30s, out of town with some co-workers at an IT conference for the week. It was a nice town, as these things go. At least, the main street was anyways. One night, one of the companies sponsoring the conference had an open bar night at a club. Of course, I drank too much, and after the rest of my coworkers left to go back to the hotel, I stayed and kept drinking. The bar closed, and on my way back, someone else from the conference decided to take it out on himself to make sure I got to the hotel safely. I didn't want to, and quite frankly, I was asked him about it. We got back to the hotel, and I decided what I really needed was a cigarette. So when the guy left, I went to a different exit to find a store that was open at 2am to get a pack of smokes. Back then I used to smoke when I was drinking. Not anymore. I walked up and down the main street trying to find a place that was open, but everything was closed. 
I ran into a couple that I assumed were locals and asked if they knew of any stores that were open at this hour so I could get some smokes. They said, sure, follow us. They started leading me off the main street and after a couple of blocks, my drunken brain started to realize we were quickly getting into a more dangerous part of town. So I started asking them how far it was. It's right over here, they kept saying. Then we get to this construction site and I was really scared. It's right down here, they said. I looked to where they were pointing, and it was a dark alleyway. I said, okay, I'm right behind you, and bolted in the other direction in a full sprint. I rounded a corner, slipped on some gravel and wiped out, tore multiple holes in my jeans. My palms were covered with gravel and bleeding. I hid behind a dumpster for a few minutes, and then I heard them walking back, talking to each other, but I couldn't tell what they were saying. When I couldn't hear them anymore, I ran back to the main street because it was well lit and my hotel was several blocks down the main street, so that was my lifeline to safety. On my way back, I hear them at the next block or two shouting, Where did that guy go? I started hearing additional voices with them, but I couldn't make out what they were saying, but they were unquestionably talking to the original two. I hurried to the hotel and got to my room and quickly passed out. Still pretty drunk, but sobered a bit from all the adrenaline. I'm quite sure I narrowly avoided getting robbed or worse in that dark alley, and they were looking for me for a while after I ran off. That guy who tried to get me safely back to the hotel deserves some props and an apology for me bugging out on him like that afterwards. Unfortunately, I didn't see him for the rest of the conference, but I probably would have been too embarrassed to say anything to him back then. This happened years ago, but I still think of it often and refer to it as my scariest story. I was 20 and just got in my first car, Ford Mustang Convertible. My favorite thing in the world was to drive late at night on abandoned roads. I decided to take my car for a drive and bear with me when I describe the roads to you because it does have bearing, I promise. I live in the Denver metro area in Colorado at the time, and my favorite roads were mountain roads. This time, however, I wanted to stay in range of cell service. I had been talking to my new beau, so I drove down to Golden to follow Highway 93 along the front range up to Broomfield or Boulder. It's usually a pretty good and solitary drive at night, and it was around 1 a.m., so I knew that I'd have the road to myself. All was going well. I had passed the road work and cop at the 72nd St. Juncture and decided to get off the road in Broomfield that would take me east, perpendicular to Highway 93, down a looping, hilly street until I reached Indiana Street. Indiana parallels Highway 93 until it ends against a road further south, closer to where my home was. As I'm turning onto Indiana, I see the first cars I've seen since the cop at 72nd and Highway 93. There was a large diesel pickup in front of me and a red hatchback in front of them, also turning south onto Indiana. The hatchback, however, was going frustratingly slow. Indiana Street is a very hilly road. Speed limits are 50 to 55 and there's only two lanes, north and south. The truck, deciding after a while of tooling behind this hatchback at 25 miles per hour to cross the double yellow line and go around the hatchback, they sped off into the distance, risking the low visibility of the hills, going back over and disappeared out of sight. The hatchback hadn't changed speed, but I decided to hang out behind them because the night was fine. I was in no rush and I was scared of crossing the double yellow lines. Death Proof is my favorite car movie, but the images of the head-on collisions never go away from me. I was confused at this point about the motives of the hatchback driver but it didn't seem too horrible to stay a car length behind them and wait, going 25 miles per hour up the hill still. I checked my phone, only to find it was dead, and as I recently bought this car, I didn't have a charger with me for the cigarette port. This made me even more uneasy when the hatchback slammed on their brakes and came to a complete stop. I couldn't see an animal or anything that warranted it. 
I was freaked out enough to overcome my fears. I crossed the double yellow line and sped past them, but they sped up too. Thinking it was a mistake, I sped up more, reaching the actual speed limit of 50 to 55. They matched me, and I was swiveling my head, trying to see the other driver's side window and looking out for incoming headlights at each hilltop. I sped up even more, this time reaching 65, and still nothing gives. They're matching my speed and keeping me from getting over in front of them. I slowed down, backing off, but they slowed down too. Finally, scared out of my mind, I punched the gas, bringing me up to 80, and slipped back over the double yellow. They tried to match my speed, but I had been significantly ahead of them for long enough to get over. Although I was scared of scraping my bumpers, they were so close. I didn't know what I expected, but when they started bumping the back of my car with theirs, I was in full freak mode. I knew that 72nd was coming up, that if I took a ride on it, I could get back on Highway 93 and the safety of the cop. So I turned my blinker on far before the juncture to let this crazy person know that I intended to get back out of their way for good. They didn't back off. If I slowed down, the pressure against my back bumper merely increased. They were still barreling along at a white knuckle speed of 65 to 70, and we passed 72nd without me being able to turn off on Indiana. The next road coming up was Layden Gulch Road, and to my surprise, they started backing off. I flicked my blinker on without thinking, wanting to get away from them ASAP, but of course they followed me onto the road, continuing to press out of my back bumper until we were going 60 in a 45 with no real street lamps and a lot of curves. I couldn't remember if this road went all the way to 93, but I was praying it did when I started seeing some cones and signs of road work along the side of the road. Suddenly I saw a road close sign moved off to the left of the road. It had been in the middle earlier that day, and instinctively I slowed down, thinking about cartoon characters flying off the edge of a cliff where a bridge used to be. Luckily, the hatchback slowed down too. We slowed down to a reasonable 35 and I thought that the danger was over when the road ahead turned into gravel and suddenly I was driving past mounds of dirt and gravel several times bigger than my car. I tried to make a U-turn but the piles were too close together and I ended up horizontal trapped between three piles to either side and behind me. Ever since I had gotten in front of it they've had their brights on and I couldn't make out the face or license plate. Now, as I drove up the middle of the road perpendicular to me, I was blinded and panicked. I tried to think of what would make them, whoever they were, hesitate to think twice. I settled for looking cocky and almost smirking. I'm a girl, so seeing a girl who should be hella freaked out, looking amused and self-assured, would be weird in this situation. I imagined I had a gun or some kind of secret up my sleeve that they wouldn't want to mess with. There was a really long silence during which I started to wonder if they had a gun or what was going on. Finally, I heard a door quietly shut. The silence, lack of yelling, road rage, and explanations freaked me out that I decided to risk driving my car directly to one of those piles, hoping to go slanted up across the side of the pile around the car. I kept my face locked into a the fuck you doing here sort of face, hit the gas, looking at where I presumed they were the whole time. I was still pretty blinded and couldn't see much, but bright light or shadows. My car miraculously made it and I tore it out of the dead end roadwork zone and back onto Indiana Street. I looked for pursuit, but didn't see anyone and made it home safely without seeing many other cars that night. The next day, I went back to the area with my brother and sister and the road close sign was back across the middle of the road, no longer at its side. I tried to call the police, but it was problematic because I didn't have a lot of useful info beyond they drove a red hatchback, and also there's a little girl, 10, missing at the time, Jessica Ridgeway, and all the resources were on the manhunt. They eventually found her body in Linda Glutch, but the teen accused did not own a red hatchback, so I'm at a loss. So this happened in 2012 when I was 15, about to turn 16. I used to sneak out a lot as a teenager and meet up with my friends who lived in the neighborhood nearby. 
maybe a 15 to 20 minute walk at best. We did this multiple times a week, just bullshitting around. Well, there was this one night I was walking through my neighborhood, which is pretty nice, upper middle class I would guess now. But I remember hearing crying in the distance of what sounded like a baby crying, which honestly startled me. I was thinking about how odd it was to hear in the dead of night, outside, and that loud. But being as freaked out as I was, I remember hiding in a nearby bush next to someone's house and waiting, listening as I heard the sound get closer. I remember looking down the road and seeing a big white van driving slowly down the road without any lights on. I was watching them come to multiple stops as they made their way down the road before parking on the street and turning the sound off. They just sat there for about 5 minutes before I finally got the nerve to jolt, running all the way home and getting caught by my parents. I always found it weird as shit as to why anyone would mimic the sound of a crying baby in the middle of the night like that. This happened to me last night after a night of a lot of drinks. Names are generic because fuck it, why not? I'm a 30 year old male. My friend John is 30 and our friend Jane is 28. We're drinking at our local friend's bar. It's a small place and not particularly popular. So our friend behind the bar was quick to refill our drinks as we finished them. After last call, we decided to get food for our drunk munchies. There obviously weren't too many options, but we ended up going to a breakfast cafe in the bad part of town. While we were there, everything was fine. We paid and started walking out. On our way out the door, there was this shady looking guy, only wearing an open hoodie, no shirt under, and baggy worn out jeans. He was leaning in the hallway for the bathrooms by the exit and watched us leave. As we were walking to the side of the building where our lift driver was picking us up, we noticed the sketchy looking fellow following about 10 to 15 feet behind us. We pick up our pace and got to the car and locked the door before greeting the driver, quickly said our name so that he knew that we were the riders and asked him to pull away because we had a bad feeling. As we pulled out of the lot, I turned to watch his sketch ball. I noticed that he had put a mask on and was wearing a single glove on his right hand and I think he might have had a gun or knife. The creep stood behind a bush watching us leave. We called the restaurant to report it. Probably should have phoned the police too, but didn't really know if we were just overreacting. Edit. I called to file a police report earlier today per some comments here. They took notes and my info and said that they would reach out if they needed more information. I was leaving the bar tonight around 12.30 a.m. going to the parking lot they share with a few other businesses. I felt I should grab my pepper spray and keys from my purse for some reason. But it wasn't too far from where my friends were standing and I didn't need my keys to open my car. This might be where it all started. I walked the 15 yards to my car. Again, don't need the keys to my car to open my door as long as they are on my person. I open the door and look inside, like I've done a million times in this parking lot, and sitting there's a man I immediately did not recognize. Immediately, I freeze and ask, Hello? Who the, who the hell are you? Meanwhile, I take in that he's sitting on my passenger seat, going through my glove box, holding my registration. He says, Are you? And says a name similar to mine. I try to think how I can get out of there fast because my mind goes to the idea that he could pull a weapon out at any point. I say, no, but I'll go get her. And I turn around to run back to the bar to tell my friends and the bartender. They check it out 30 seconds later and the guy took off before anyone could see him. I'm female and at the time I was 16. I was hanging out at my friend's place, Ava, 16, with another girl, Abigail, 14. We decided it would be a great idea to sneak out of the apartment in the middle of the night. For some background, it was a suburban Eastern European neighborhood, so the idea wasn't that bright as you have probably figured. Cut to the chase, at around 1.15am, we first decided to go out. 
The plan was to keep walking in a straight line until we got to the town's river. Pretty easy, right? As we were walking, to my horror, I see in front of us a tall, middle-aged man shouting a boy's name, which was Andrew, as he was holding a pocket knife. I knew straight off that it was bad news. Terrified, I whispered to my friend very closely, we need to back off. Can't explain now, just go backwards, slowly. With Ava almost being legally blind, she couldn't see much in the dark and definitely did not see the man. So she starts running backwards like crazy. She steps on a branch and makes the loudest freaking sound one could ever make in this situation. The middle-aged man turns around, looks me straight in the eyes. So I say fuck it and start running too. We get back to the apartment safe and sound. A couple drinks later, my other friend Abigail decides she wants to sneak out too. And me being the rebellious teen I was, I followed her out without a second thought. At this time, it was about 3 a.m. We were hanging out in the park smoking and talking about boys when suddenly, lo and behold, at that park entrance, the middle-aged man. I tell her, okay, this is not good. We need to go back now. So we quietly leave the park and, thank God, he didn't start chasing us. Worse, he got into a white van. It was obvious that the van was following us from a distance, but that wasn't the problem, as we were close to Ava's house, right? So I thought until Abigail turns to me and whispers, don't let it show, but I think we're lost. And then it hits me, we lost our direction. We start turning down random corners, desperately looking for the place, until we run into Ava's dad, who had woken up to the horror of two missing kids. I think it was obvious that we all got a pretty bad lecture and then were sent off to sleep. Looking back on it, as much as I hated her dad for that, I can say that someone was probably looking out for us up there. I can't stress it enough, don't play with your chances like this. There's a lot of sick people out there, especially in sketchy neighborhoods in the middle of the night. To this day, I wonder what could have happened if we hadn't found the house in time. Stay safe, y'all. I live in a neighborhood next to a busy intersection and my neighborhood is guarded by a nice tree line that unfortunately removes all the privacy in the fall and winter from the constant traffic. Every other night for the past two months, I go out to smoke around 7 to 9 p.m. I'm standing there and smoking a cigarette on my front porch. This small car pulls to the side of the road in the pitch dark and watches me smoke under the porch and doesn't leave until I go inside. This has happened three times already, but I think last night my heart sunk to my testicles because I realized it's the same car, same spot. This time I stared back in the fucking dark under the very dim light and they drove off. What the fuck? How did they see me so clearly? I'm not sure why this car is fixated on me when I go outside to smoke under the dim porch light, but it's starting to bother me. Around 2015, I was in high school and worked a very late night shift in the city on the weekends. One night, the subway I was on got delayed and after 30 minutes of sitting in the cars, the conductor told everyone to leave because the trains weren't going to run for that night. Everyone on the train either called a cab or walked a 30 minute walk to the bridge in one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in New York City. I was 16 and alone and extremely exhausted after working on my feet for 10 hours. I tried to call a cab and they said it would take up to 20 minutes to come and get me, but by the time it comes, I could have already arrived at my destination. So I decided to walk the bridge and I felt somewhat safe because other people were walking a few feet ahead of me. They were people from the train as well. At first I didn't know which direction to walk in as it was dark and there are no signs. I start walking in the opposite direction and this middle aged man who spoke in broken English calls for me and motions me to the right direction. I immediately thank him and he walks with me from that point. He begins asking me questions like, why are you walking around so late? Do you live with anyone at home? How old are you? I'm hesitant to answer these questions and at this point I'm super creeped out. Luckily this girl around my age was walking behind me and the guy and stopped us so she could ask if I knew the guy. I said that I didn't and the guy immediately took my arm and refused to let me go. 
She was with her boyfriend and her boyfriend threatened to fight him if he didn't leave me alone. After the boyfriend threatened him, the guy ran off immediately without hesitation. The couple walked with me until we finally got off the bridge and I arrived in a safe neighborhood. From there, I thanked them so many times and told her that I was grateful for her. I still think about this encounter to this day and I honestly don't know what would have happened if that girl hadn't been there to save me. I'm so grateful that she did. My family lives at the top of a hill from a high crime area on the outskirts of the city. People who live at the bottom of the hill often come up to our little neighborhood to use the courts and the church and the middle school. Sometimes we see them wandering back down the hill after dark and sometimes kids cut through our yard to avoid having to walk down the sharp curve that cars sometimes take too fast. We've had accidents and near misses outside, so I don't mind if kids cut through our well-lit yard as long as they keep moving and don't mess with anything. I kept the lights on until it's time for bed and then I switch over to motion sensors. Recent events led me to install cameras and signs indicating that the property is monitored. Around 3 last night, I was home alone and drifting out to sleep when the security camera behind the house pinged. It detected movement. Usually, it's a groundhog or some small rodent. I brought up the camera on my cell phone. The enhanced vision displayed a shape in the bottom of the right corner, leaning or pressing against the side of the house, rocking back and forth. I can also make out steam rising from him, which was a telltale sign of taking up standing piss against my foundation. I could have activated the speaker and scared him off, but I wanted to go back to sleep so I watched on making sure he kept moving along. He didn't. He kept close to the wall as he moved along, suggesting he knew that there was a light sensor covering the center of the yard. He stopped at the dining room window, pulled out a small light, and cased the room with it. That was when I chose to turn on the speaker and address him directly. I pressed the microphone icon on the phone and said, You are being watched. It was loud enough to fill the side of the yard. It didn't seem to bother him, and if the speaker wasn't mounted right outside the bedroom window, I might have thought I muted it. I added, You are being recorded, guy with a flashlight looking into my house. He turned towards the camera, still hiding his face under his hood, and said, This right here is your weak spot. He waved the light into my dining room window again to illustrate. I'm going to prove it to you someday if you don't get it fixed. After that, he flashes the light on the camera, blinding it until he hopped the garden fence at the edge of the yard and vanished. I shared the video with the police who found it amusing, at least the excuse. I got a sense that one of them seemed to recognize his voice. However, they gave me no promises or assurances. Looking at the yard, I try to figure out why the dining room might be the weak spot. I think I'll take the morning to figure it out. My ex and I lived in a brand new subdivision. It was two houses and an unfinished house with vacant lots. One area was far from the house and nearly in the woods. Late one night, maybe two or so in the morning, the doorbell rings and rings and rings. Finally getting annoyed and worrying about a newborn waking up, my ex and I answer the door. There's a couple, a man and a woman standing there. They said that they broke down and needed some help. They are all the way in the back lot. My ex is not the smartest guy, but he's an auto mechanic, so he decides to go help them. I tell him it seems weird. He doesn't listen, so I do the next best thing and tell him that I'll drive over, leaving the baby in the house. I wait in the truck while he checks it out. They keep insisting he go under the car, under the dashboard, all sorts of weird stuff that would make him prone and easily attacked. My ex keeps telling him that he can't because he's huge. He's nearly 7 foot tall, 350 pounds. He simply doesn't fit, so he comes back to me and says that now it seems weird, he's finding nothing wrong. He 
He gets in the truck and we call 911 and tell him that we're calling a wrecker. We see the two people running off into the woods, so we lock ourselves in the house until the cops show up. The cops check out the scene, find the two people not hiding very well due to the serious amounts of drugs that they're on, and realize the car is stolen. I'm positive they would have branded my ex, giving them a chance to rob the house. So 2am drug heads, please stay in prison, let's never meet again. Back in 2015, when I was in my second semester of college, as a freshman, I had a habit of pacing around to keep my thoughts coming. I would had this habit since childhood, and it often seemed that I couldn't stay focused on anything that required creative thought without it. Considering my intended major required literature and creative writing courses, it was something I found myself doing constantly especially when I was trying to think up ideas for essays and narrative assignments in class. To be clear, my pacing isn't just walking. It needs to be done along a predictable, short route so I can mentally clock out of reality and focus solely on my thoughts while I run on autopilot. I often put in my headphones to prevent distractions that take me back into reality because if it happens mid-thought pattern, I'll lose at least half of the ideas that I was exploring. Weird, I know, but I want to clarify this now, because I've had a lot of people ask me why I don't just go for a long walk around the neighborhood instead of me walking around in circles in the backyard like I normally do. It was getting late one evening, and I had a lengthy essay due the day after next. I had a good portion of it already done, but I still had a bit to go. My roommate had come back into the dorm, and considering the time, it was perfectly understandable that she wanted to sleep. She generally didn't mind my pacing, but I preferred that I didn't do it when she was trying to rest. Also understandable. And with her turning off the lights in the room, it would be a little difficult for me anyway. I still wanted to keep going on this assignment though, so I decided to find somewhere else on campus outside the room to pace in and figured I'd note down ideas in an app on my phone as needed for later. There was nowhere in the dorm complex that was suitable, so I started walking around. The university was well known for the large campus, so I figured I'd find a good place eventually. I walked for a bit until I found myself at one of the more historic buildings, which had a nice courtyard in front of it. Part of the courtyard included wide pedestrian paths that met at the center at a nice roundabout with a fountain in the middle. A little further from it was another small roundabout with a grass island in the center. Circular paths like that are ideal for my pacing because I don't have to stop and turn around repeatedly and I ended up choosing to walk around the one with the grass island so I wouldn't disturb anyone that wanted to hang out by the fountain. Some people are a bit unnerved by my pacing, so I worried it might freak out a stranger who saw me on a late night walk. There was an occasional passerby, but for the most part this place was empty at this time of night. I figured I could just go in circles for a bit without disturbing anyone. I put in my headphones, yes, both of them, and yes, I'm aware it was a poor decision given the circumstances. But I was exhausted and just wanted to get this brainstorming session over with so I could go to sleep. I started to walk in circles with my music playing as my mind drifted. I don't know how long I was pacing before the encounter, but it wasn't long. As I was rounding once more, I was met by a headlight from a car driving slowly up the path to the roundabout. I was a little confused by this as I was sure that this path was meant for pedestrian traffic only, but since it was deserted, safe for me, I assumed that the driver just needed an easy way to turn around and didn't think it was a big deal since the risk of accidentally hitting someone was next to zero. The vehicle moved past me while I moved closer to the center to keep from being in its way and kept my eyes on it while I walked. I expected the car to just go around and then back down the path where it came from since that was the only path on the roundabout that led back to the street. But instead, it came to a stop on the side of the roundabout opposite the street. While initially, I started to assume then that they needed to look at their GPS or make a phone call before continuing. 
There was no denying the uneasy feeling I got about the situation. Instead of continuing my route, which would have taken me right alongside the vehicle, I decided to take one of the paths towards the building and just wait for them to move on. While I walked, I noticed an empty parking lot on the side of the building. The path didn't go there, but it was easy to walk over the grass patch dividing the two areas. I started to pace in the lot for a bit and quickly forgot about returning to the roundabout as I got lost in my thoughts again. I was pulled back into reality by the shine of the semi-distant headlights. It was the same car as before, or at least looked eerily similar. Luckily, I was facing the entrance to the lot as it turned in, and said entrance was a decent distance from me. I started to hear quiet alarm bells in the back of my mind, even though the rational side tried to assume that it must have been a different car and an odd coincidence, and perhaps I was just paranoid. Regardless of my mental attempts to explain it away, I felt it was better to be safe than sorry. I ended up walking around the other side of the building to get back to the little roundabout I was at before. I took a breath and calmed my nerves a little, with some half-hearted reassurance before walking on the roundabout again. This time, I didn't turn my music back on, but I kept my headphones in. They weren't noise cancelling at all, so I could hear decently through them when the music was paused. I wanted to go back to brainstorming, but I felt somewhat anxious and panicky at the thought of it. So I kept pacing like I had been, this time focused and very much more aware of what was going on around me. I thought that maybe once 10 or 15 minutes had gone by without incident, I'd be able to calm down and get the last of this done. Barely 5 minutes passed when I heard the obvious sound of rubber tires coming up the path again. This time when I looked, I was certain that it was the same car and that it had followed me back from the parking lot. I didn't know what the driver wanted. They never honked, rolled down their windows, or anything to try to get my attention. But I realized at this point that as a 19 year old girl alone at night in a more secluded area of the campus, I've been extremely lucky so far and that luck wouldn't last forever. This time, I sped walk through the grass. There's a pedestrian only arch bridge that goes over a busy major street that runs through the campus most of the dorms like mine are on one side of the bridge, while lecture halls and class buildings are on the other. And while I normally hated the bridge because of how steep it was, it was closer than the nearest street crossing right then and didn't have a wait time to cross it. Also, there's no chance of a vehicle following me up. I felt much more at ease from the top of it, and from there I saw the car drive off, seemingly calling it at night. I walked back to my dorm and by the time I reached my door, the adrenaline had worn off and I was just exhausted. I went in quietly not to wake up my roommate, laid back into bed without changing into my pajamas and fell asleep. I never contacted campus police about the matter or anything because I didn't have any helpful information other than four door car that could have been black or dark blue for all I know and it didn't seem like I'd be believed anyway. I never saw that vehicle again or heard anything that was related to it in any way, so over time, it slipped my mind altogether. I still don't know what that driver planned or why they didn't just get out of the car and come after me on foot at that point. Maybe it was the first time they were trying this and they were nervous about making a scene and getting caught. Maybe it was just some college age assholes messing with me because they thought it was fun to scare people like that. Whatever it was, I'm glad I didn't have to find out the hard way, and I never paced in public areas after dark on that campus ever again. This happened in summer. I was 17 and lived with my parents in a little village in the south of France. I was hanging out with my friend at a local McDonald's gas station next to the motorway, bumming cigarettes off people. It was around 7 or 8, we were both bored out of our minds and keen to get some weed but had no one selling in our area. The only way was to go to a town nearby which was 20 minutes drive and a good 2 and a half hours walking. We decided to walk, hitchhike there and after something like 20 minutes of walking, someone picks us up and drops us off about a 1 hour walk away from the spot we were heading for. 
Casual guy, nothing unusual. We walk the rest of the way, get our weed, find a place to hang out and light up. After a while, we start walking back, both pretty fucked up. And after another hour walk, we're by a main road hitchhiking again. It's pretty late now, around 1 a.m., and not many cars drive by. After a while, a car that had already driven by 10 minutes before stops. Guy rolls down his window and says that he recognized us from driving past the first time and felt bad that no one picked us up. We tell him where we're headed and he agrees to drop us off even though it's not on his way. Happy that we don't have to walk for the next couple hours, we get in, me in the front seat and my friend in the back seat, and the guy starts driving. I'm quite stoned at this point, so it takes me a while to notice that he's driving in the middle of the road between lanes. I realize that he's probably drunk or on something as he zigzags and occasionally drives on the sidewalk. Luckily, there's no one else on the road. This guy also talks in a weird way, mumbling and mixing up words. After a bit of small talk, he asks us if we have any drugs, weed or such. Trying our best not to look stoned, I tell him we don't smoke or anything, but he insists, telling us he needs to know so we can hide in the glove compartment in case he gets pulled over. I tell him it's the truth. He then tells us that he needs to drop by and tell his family he's going to take us home, that it won't be long. He seems pretty keen on introducing us to them. He takes a turn, and that's us, off to an unknown place in a complete stranger's car in the middle of the night, no one knowing we left or where we went. I start panicking a bit and ask the guy if he could take us straight home. He tells us not to worry and it won't take long. After a moment of silence, he says, You're scared, aren't you? I'm not up to anything. Don't you worry. I try not to sound worried laugh and say no I trust him and it's cool I start checking if the doors are locked or if he has anything to use as a weapon or something and I think if the doors are locked the only way we can get out is by beating the shit out of this guy where the fuck is he taking us what does he want we don't talk until we reach the supposed destination a small and dark alley a couple of minutes away from the main road he parks next to some houses tells us to get out and unlocks the doors. I take a deep breath and step out. I see a woman carrying a child, staring out over the garden wall of one of the houses. The guy yells, Look honey, I'm with my friends here. Guys, say hi to my family. I think she saw that he was drunk or something, stared at us suspiciously, and walked back into the house without a word. We get back into the car and he starts driving again. That's my wife. He mumbles in a drunken way. A few minutes later, we enter the village and he asks us where we live. I tell him it's fine that he can drop us off right here, but he insists. I want to know where my buddies live. I lie to him and tell him just down the road. We thank him and get out and head home. I often hitchhiked, never that late though, and it always went well. Nothing happened, but it made me realize getting into random people's cars is maybe not the best idea. Also, we could have easily crashed or hurt someone. I've never hitchhiked since. I've told this story to nearly anyone that I've been somewhat close to, but I've never shared it anywhere online. It isn't as bad as most of the other stories I see here. But my mom definitely didn't take it lightly, considering how much I cried and how long I've been refusing to leave my house after it happened. It took place in late May 2018, on my way back home from my old best friend's birthday party. I was 13 at the time, if that matters, or changes anything. Her house is about 7 to 10 minutes away from mine if you're using a bike, and basically next to a huge field at the end of the place. It takes me an even smaller amount of time to reach, considering how fast I always rode, which is a really relevant part of the whole event. I had a lot of fun that day, and stayed after the majority of the other friends left, which was a huge mistake. It was getting dark, so I decided to go back to my house, but I stayed playing outside with the neighbors until she called me, saying that my mom was demanding I go home. 
I felt really upset about it, but didn't want to make my mother mad or annoy my best friend at the time, so I just unenthusiastically complied. Before I left, we took some pictures and she gave me a flashlight since I forgot to bring the bike light. Now, this is where things gradually start going downhill. We're at her gate. She's handing me the flashlight. We're saying our goodbyes and the only thing I have on my mind is not getting caught by the cops for having an improper light. That thought was extremely irrational. The moment she closed the gate and went back inside, I got a really sharp feeling in my stomach. A mix of adrenaline rush and getting stabbed except it doesn't actually hurt. I'm bad at describing things and even worse at distinguishing what they are. But I guess it was quite literally a gut feeling. If not that, it was some sort of a sign at least. I'm a really skeptical person and rarely ever experience such things. And when I do, I struggle with determining if it's just me being paranoid or a real hunch. This was the most vivid thing ever though. Back to the thing. I rode for maybe about 30 seconds to a minute when I got an urge to stop before a short concrete bridge that's part of the road. I got a really big urge to go back and ask my old best friend to go with me or at least call my uncle to pick me up, which I knew would be too big of a hassle since I had my bike with me. The road I was on at the moment was on the right side of a really long one, which basically leads straight to the street where my house is, so I just kept going and ignored it. This is where the whole event takes place. I think somewhere around 10 p.m. if my memory serves me right, and this place is pretty small, 6k people, so I didn't expect anyone to be on the streets except the cops, and my stupid self thought they would appear out of nowhere. Well, now I really wish there were cops patrolling around that night. I rode over the bridge, streets fully empty, till I saw a group of guys emerge from the road on the right side, a bit further away from me, walking in the same direction, so I don't think they saw me. At that point, I slowed down and was contemplating what to do. I wanted to take another route, but I thought I'd get lost and run into them, so I was about to hide behind the trees and bushes wait for them to go away and continue my way back. I just kept going though. I started riding at my normal speed, but increased it when I saw them a few meters away. As I passed by them, one of them yelled out something along the lines of, Hey bitch! I saw two of them speeding up their walk and nearly running while attempting to get in front of me. Then one of them threw a really thick branch, or I don't even know what it was, at my wheel. I was already shaken up at this point but just kept going and thought that they were drunk and messing around till I heard them running. My blood literally froze and I was filled with dread, something I don't recall experiencing before that. Thoughts were racing through my head knowing that there would be no one to help me if something happened since the streets were dead and then one of them yelling something along the lines of, it's not worth it. The running stopped and as terrified as I was, I also got relief knowing that they gave up on whatever they were trying to pull. It didn't prevent the remaining one or two minutes from feeling like a race with death though. It all happened so quickly, but felt like an eternity. I literally bumped into the gate of my house, locked it, threw my bike on the ground and sprinted aside, locking the entrance to my house. My grandma greeted me and asked me why I was in such a rush since she had been watching me from the window and I just started sobbing and telling her about what just happened in a really messy order with a lot of missing parts. I'm not sure if she even understood what exactly happened. She did tell me that she saw no guys leaving the street, which means they went back instead of continuing their way. I don't know if they were just drunk and trying to scare me, but I don't want to think of what would have happened if the branch actually got my wheel and made me fall over my bike but maybe they would have turned back away anyway, so if I had hidden, I would have been in a worse position. I have no clue at this point, but I know it's had a huge impact on my already anxious self and my life during the next six months. I quit going to dance classes because they would usually start at 9 p.m. and end at 11. I stopped leaving the house except for school, and any time I walked back alone, I was straight up sprinting to my house regardless of it being 1pm or 7pm. 
I don't remember the last time I left my house at night without being in a car. 